Yeah. You got this urgent letter from the ABCP. Oh, wow. I wonder what this could be. To Joe Basha from the ABCP. Wow, this looks official. Dear Certified Clinical Perfusionist, the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion is advising you that you must submit 10 Category 1 CEU by next week or you will lose your certification. Sincerely, Dave Matthews, PhD, Roger Ramirez, PhD, and the Executive Co-Directors. Let me call my immediate supervisor, Stephanie, and ask her if I can go. This is perfect. Hello? Yes, Stephanie, hi, this is Joe. Hi, Joe. Stephanie, I just got an urgent letter from the ABCP stating that I am 10 CEU short and I've been looking at this New Orleans conference and I'd like to submit my request to go to that because I really need the credits. Uh, geez, Joe, uh, I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to help you. Administration informed me they're denying all meeting requests. I guess you're going to have to find another way to get your seizures. Oh my what God. Uh, there's nothing I can do. You're on your own, Joe. Sorry. I'm taking this up the chain of command. Come in. Dr. McGilvery. Hey, Joe. I don't, thank you for seeing me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I do not have enough CEUs to maintain my certification. Joe, how is that my problem? Our role is to pay you to do perfusion, not to pay you to go take courses. And it was that way in the past, but we just don't have the money to do it anymore. So you're gonna have to figure it out on your own. Joe, what's up? Dr. Lumsden, I do not have enough CEUs to maintain my certification and I'm gonna lose my certification. If we can take all the perfusionists away, we can't do any cases. We don't have enough perfusionists. I don't care about these CEUs. Cost too much money, you gotta stay here and do these cases. Figure out some other way you're gonna get education. Hey, Joe, you received another uh, urgent letter from the ABCP. Oh, thank you. Dear Certified Clinical Perfusionist, the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion regrets to inform you that because you lack enough Category 1 CEU, your certification is suspended. You are no longer a Certified Clinical Perfusionist. Oh, no. Hmm. I really want to go to this meeting. Hey, Joe. You received a letter from your job, man. Hey, dude. Thank you so much. Dear Joe Basha, the Health and Happiness Hospital regrets to inform you that because you lost your ABCP certification to a, due to a lack of Category 1 CEUs, you are fired. You must report immediately to the operating room and clean out your locker to make room for your replacement who clearly knew more than you about getting CEUs and maintaining their certification.
Stephanie with HET Perfusion. Oh, okay. We have an open heart one month from today, 9 a.m. start. Oh, really? A single vessel off pump? No problem. Thank you. Hey, Mom, can you bring me a sandwich? I can't believe it hasn't uh, been done before. I know. Hell, I know it. Hello <laughs> and welcome to Perf Web number 18. It is hard to believe that we have, this is our 18th program. And uh, I want to welcome everyone to the show tonight. We're going to dive right in, but I'm going to tell you up front that this, what you're going to see, has never been, that I know of, has never been done before. In case there's somebody out there that's done it, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> but I don't believe it has ever been done before. Not that I've ever seen. But I also want to throw out some props 
to my tremendous staff, the, the, the editor, the producer, the IT folks, all the guys running the, the board back there, because in one week, in one week, the same week, we are going to have both the absolute worst program we've ever done, which was Tuesday, and the absolute best program we've ever done, which is going to be this one today. So both extremes. We have a great panel with us. We have to my immediate right, of course, Dr. Mark Batoyer. You have met him before, and he's been on several of our programs. And then to his right is Shelly Wagner. Shelly is a R an RN BSN, and she works at Memorial Hermann, the Woodlands Hospital. And then to her right is Patrick O'Toole, perfusionist extraordinaire, who you have seen before on this program. And Patrick, this whole thing is his idea. And so he came up with this idea. He thought about it. He said, I'd really like to do this. And I was like, sure, we'll do it. And, uh, and he did. And the program, uh, the, the, this is just for me, I, from my perspective, and I do a lot of educational programs, this one is going to be the most fun and really I think the most informative we've ever done. I think everybody is going to have a great time with this. So with that said, I, I have some obligatory things that I have to discuss, okay? So they make me do this. First of all, make sure you subscribe. There's a subscribe button on the YouTube. And by the way, we're, we're streaming to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. So either one of those you're on, if you're on Facebook or, 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 or Twitter, it's great to watch it there, but please go on YouTube, have a Gmail account and subscribe because the number of subscriptions that we have really helps us in features that are opened up to us while we do these programs. So it's critically important. Also, ask for those notifications. If we decide to do a program that you didn't see the advertisement for, you'll know we've gone live and that we're doing a program. If you have the time and want to watch it, you can. Of course, you know, we always have everything in the library and it stays there forever. So if you watch it tonight and you want to see it again tomorrow, I'm sure you're probably all going to want to do that. Um, then you can do that or next week or show somebody else as the case may be. Um, so subscribe to YouTube. Okay, Perf Web Flyer. If you go to our website, oh yeah, like us on Facebook. There it is. Forgot that. And what's the other one you do on the on follow us on on the tweeter? How do you do that? <laughs> the tweeter. David, do you have a do you have a logo for that? Okay, so, so like us on Facebook. I forgot that part. And then don't forget to follow us on the tweeter. Okay. All right. Apparently that was funny to everybody. Okay. Um, YouTube chat feature, this is what it looks like. Make sure that you are using, uh, you are signed into your Gmail account and it's right there on your right. You can see, oh no, that's the wrong thing. You can see it on the right there and you can chat. In fact, I've sent a couple out. You can send some back to me. We know you're there. Um, there's a call in number for when we open the phone lines. You'll see this notification there. So go there, uh, make a call. I'll answer the phone right here and you can talk to any of us here in the studio. And, uh, and ask your questions or make a comment or whatever the case, whatever you want to do. Um, okay, I think I have done all of the obligatory things that I'm required to do. So let me tell you a little something about this session tonight. So if you, uh, okay, we switch to the, uh, to, the ther to, the, uh, to the actual show. So you're gonna see us go off because you want to see this in full screen mode. There it is right there, okay, so what we have here is a multi-camera view of everything happening in the operating room during the procedure between the surgeon and the perfusionist. And anesthesia. And to some degree, well, yes, and anesthesia is included. I'm not excluding them, but you know, you don't see anesthesia in this. So, you know, that's true. But for my anesthesia brothers out there and sisters, you know, yes, you are included in this, but he just can't see you. Uh, maybe next time, Patrick, you can add some <laughs> more cameras and we'll do anesthesia yeah. too. Well, the reading. Um, but here's the operative field <laughs> exactly. and you get to see a lot of the operation here. Here is the hemodynamic monitor. 
So you've got the EKG, you've got the arterial waveform, you've got the uh, pulmonary artery pressure, you've got the CVP, you've got the pulse ox, and over here are the relevant numbers that are associated with what those waveforms are showing. And then down here in the left corner is the oxygenator that you're going to see there. And then here in the middle, man, this thing. I've never seen that before, well. Joe. I know you have. You probably never have because you're right here because that's the that's Dr. Matoyer's back. No, that's I think it is. Yeah, it's Dr. Matoyer's back. Uh, looks. And, or Dr. Maniscalco. No, Dr. 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 Yeah, that's right. The black scrubs. Okay, let's just no, turn this like thing off. That's not working. And then in the, to the right of the oxygenator, you see a panel, and that is the the heart lung machine perfusion panel and then to the right is the actual heart lung machine and what you see there is the main arterial head which is the to the left there um, and then you have the cardioplegia the pump suckers the root vent and the LV vent now we don't always use all of those we use those depending but we always use cardioplegia we always use the sucker and we're always probably going to use a root vent the LV vent is for valves and I think in these cases uh, most of them, I think, the two of the, the three we show you, you're going to see that. Now, like everything else in life, so let's switch to the other screen. Like everything else in life, this has been an evolution. So when we first started out, and I, I got a telephone call. Here, can you uh, go ahead and, and project us? I'll tell this story real quick, and then we'll go to that first, um, that first one. Can you put us on on live? Yeah, we're on live. We no, are. us. We are. Oh, we are. Okay, so program out YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at the top one, not the bottom. I'm sorry. Um, so I got a telephone call the other day, yesterday, from a lady named Adrian, and I answered the phone, and she said who she was. She had left me a message. I called her back, and uh, in the in in deference to HIPAA and all that, her father was one of the cases that we did. One of the first cases, in fact, that we did. And we'll call him Mr. B. And Mr. B actually runs a radio program, a podcast program through YouTube. And it's called uh, Weekly Politics in Montgomery County or something like that. I don't know if you've ever heard of it before. No, and she but, recognized uh, him through the, the and video. No, well, they got uh, well, uh, Patrick got consent. Monitor. No, when he oh, okay. consented. Right. Yeah, when, when he got consent. I'm just checking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I was yeah, trying yeah. to figure out how we're yeah, violating no it hip, No HIPAA violation. No HIPAA. <laughs> and uh, so... Mr. B, if you're watching, you can either text us, call us, call in, Adrian, if you're watching. But when we first did it, you'll notice that we're missing that, that panel for the heart lung machine. Can you point to that for me? Uh, go back to that and point to that for me. Uh, yeah, that panel that was there. So the early cases we did, we missed that. But uh, so in Mr. B's case, it's not there. But this is actually Mr. B's case. So let's play just a little bit of this. And while it's running, so what you see there, Mr. B, is your heart. And Dr. Maniscalco is putting purse strings in. And on the uh, right side is all of your hemodynamic monitoring. And on the bottom left, you see the oxygenator, which is where all of your blood went through. And we oxygenate it and stuff. And then to the right is the heart-lung machine with the various pumps spinning. So can you fast forward that a little bit and just go ahead and get to the uh, going on bypass phase? Which was that, uh, Patrick? You might have the, the number. Yeah, that one is... Uh, 325? Yep, 3 minutes 325. and 25 Yeah, 3 minutes and 25 seconds. So we'll fast forward on this a little bit. I haven't seen a right atrial appendage like that in a long time, Joe. Really? I know. It's exciting. Beautiful. It is. It's Easy a to fix if there's a <laughs> hole in it. Yes. Oh, here, look. We're going on pump. Oh, well, there you go. Reservoir getting full. Filled up. There you go. Mr. B, there you go. Right now, Patrick has a look at your hemodynamic monitor. But for look those. Look at your heart. You know, I'm yeah, not, heart starts, yeah, it's shrinking it's, up. It's empty. It's yeah. shrunk. Yes, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. I've never seen a heart do that before. <laughs> right. I have never. Yeah, in my all life. you ever see is that red line right That's now. all we yeah, ever yeah, look at. That's it. In. So, oh, somebody's calling in. Let's Already? see. Hello, this you're on the air. Oh, emergency alert. Oh, is it that new national this is a presidential? Test the, is it I don't real? know what I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know. Here, let's see. Let's see who that was. I don't know what happened. Did everybody here. get their alert yesterday? Yes, I got it. Yeah, it, like six phones went off in the OR. It was great. 
Um, Scared everybody to death. Can somebody uh, help me with this phone? I, I can't oh, figure it out. Goodness. Well, here I got in it. In the here. meantime, uh, David, yeah. can you skip on up to when we arrest Mr. B's heart? That's because uh, that might be kind of cool for him to see. That's uh, four minutes fifty-seven seconds. Let's see here. I'm calling him right now. Calling his number back. So basically, you're on bypass now, but your heart's still working. So. Yes. And we do heart surgery like that sometimes, don't we, Joe? Yes, we do sometimes. But this is exciting stuff. Has anybody here ever seen anything like this where you're seeing every, and these are all synced together, right, Patrick? Yeah, they're all the same. You could never see this. Look at the ice going on the heart. He uses ice? The cross clamp is going on. <laughs> I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat this guy. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> but, so, Mr. B, there's the ice on your heart. Let's see. I guess this is a good work. Notice the cardioplegia head call is back. turning, and you can see that the uh, the heart's going to rest here in a minute. I use ice, too, Mr. B, just saying. I'm just kidding. We have one of your cases on here, too. Don't be so jealous of Dr. Matascalco. Why are you so jealous of him? All right. So, let's go ahead and, and bring us back live. But that gives you kind of an idea out there in web world what it is that Patrick has really accomplished here. So... Patrick, I'm going to turn yeah. this over to you now and let you kind of go okay. forward me, with this yeah, show. I've got some people to thank and all that. But uh, so we, we filmed. Uh, yes, oh, you are. We back. filmed. Um, Please don't talk to me. What do we film? Ten cases. And um, the scope of this was pretty big. We actually ended up with six terabytes of, of material Holy to edit cow. down and hours and hours of, of time on that. So. Um, but I, I, need to, I do need to thank a few people. I wanted to thank Joe for providing the resources to do this because something like this, you know, you can come up with an idea like this, but who would actually do it? And, you know, you, you provided the people and, of course, the equipment in the studio. And i got to thank Dr. Maniscalco and Dr. Matoyer for allowing us to film during the cases, which was really nice of them. Um, I want to thank Roger Ramirez, who did the, the, fan, the camera work in the operating room. I've got some pictures of how we did this. We'll do that in just a minute. And then... Uh, David Sullivan, he did hours and hours of editing on this as well. He's, he's our person running the board, the board back there. Um, <clears throat> can we take a minute and pull up those uh, production photos one, of, one at a time? Oh, yeah. So we can see how we did this. Yes. We used uh, GoPro cameras on, uh, on a couple of different areas of the operating room. The, uh, you'll see there that the, the nurses were kind of more interested in looking at our equipment and our films than, than the actual surgery. That's, that's how nice the pictures were looking on the, uh, on the live stream when we did that. <clears throat> so that's a couple of nurses looking at our, at our live stream. All, this, all these cameras were, were uh, they recorded simultaneously into this machine, the live stream. Um, there's a picture of Roger with the camera. He's got the camera on a boom, which he, you know, uses, he uses that to kind of get right down into the uh, into the heart where you can get good pictures and zoom in and, and follow the, the action at the table. And there's a picture here of the uh, one of the GoPros. That's, that's the one you're seeing on the pump. We flipped that image over because it was upside down. Uh, we also ended up flipping the image of the, uh, of the heart because that, that way you're seeing the perspective of, of what the surgeon sees, not what the anesthesiologist sees. I think that's all of our pictures. Oh, there's a picture of the... Uh, the GoPro that we have on the uh, on, on the reservoir, so that's how we did this. How long did it take you to set that up, Patrick? In the OR? Yeah. Yeah. Roger came in and did the the feed from the uh, from the um, vitals first mm -hmm. the night before to make sure that all works. Oh, awesome. And then from because it didn't slow me down, I'm just oh no, we were there early. I, I, yeah. I, it's Pretty about cool. an hour. Pretty cool <laughs> to test everything and all that. So um, the goal of this project. Uh, I think you had some ideas of what the goals were. My goal, I think, was that we would we would hopefully have a, a a better understanding of how we as perfusionists affect what the surgeon is doing at the field more precisely, and also perhaps that the surgeon would understand a little bit more about what we do and how it affects you. And I'll tell you, from editing these and going through these films, I have learned an enormous amount. In fact, you told me, you're doing a better job. I'm not sure why. And it's because of looking at these films over and over and over again, because we've got them all marked up as to what each part of the, uh, of the surgery. Um, so that's where we're at. Uh, we can go into a really big case that you had. It was an aortic valve. Well, it was an aortic root replacement was the original idea. Mm -hmm. And then we 
uh, the, the valve was not working and we went back and replaced the valve as well. So that's our, our biggest surgery. That and we that found. is a big, that is a big case. I'm yeah. curious about something because, you know, you saw that those, the nurses, mm -hmm. they're, they're like, you know, they're the circulators and they're just folk, just looking at all of that stuff. Now you were you you circulate and scrub, yes, so you do both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's your perspective on this? In other words, as a as as either not being a perfusionist, not being a heart surgeon, not being maybe anesthesia, from a nursing perspective, what do you think about this project? I think it's awesome. I, we could use it so much for teaching for our nurses staff when we're learning and training to scrub. Um, there's, it's so hard to really describe to them what they're going to see up there and what they're going to do up there and what they're going to hand and why they're going to hand it and what he's doing while I'm doing this and what yes. I need to expect next. My job is to expect what he needs Anticipation. and to have it before he needs it. And it's very, um, this would just be awesome to train because they'd be able to see that so much And better. also yeah. having a perspective of what we do. Mm -hmm. But I think you could tell, I feel like I, I mean, that's a, that's just a nice corollary to this. Yes. Because I didn't even think about that until she just said that. Right, but would it also be because really Because there's some guys that get it. Shelly gets it. There's a handful of scrubs that get it. Yeah. But there's some that need an extra time on the learning curve. Yes, but I and think. this is super easy. Wouldn't it be cool to have the back table being videoed I was, I was just, with the field. I was just about mm -hmm. to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That I was would thinking be good. it for yeah. I was I read your I read your mind. Okay. <laughs> Way to go, Shelly. Sorry. Way to go, Shelly. Well, right, seriously, I, 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 seriously I, I just thought of that. I mean that was I mean she thought of it, but I mean it's a great I didn't, yes. I didn't think about it before. So yeah, I think it's fantastic. Good. I think this has so much potential like what you're because you see things usually in a vacuum, right? You mm -hmm. see you see one thing that you're watching. If I'm standing there watching you operate, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and it's neat. I mean, it's pretty cool what you do. But it's not in a vacuum. Right. You're doing that because of all these other people. You know, and then what I do may affect her. What she does could affect me. Uh, just understanding how the Venus line can be obstructed and the heart's <laughs> blowing up you know i mean it sounds right. silly but you know i mean i know it's a simple example but right. little things like yeah. that what are the what can we really all under learn from each other and that's kind of the idea of of, of dr lumsden's you know pumps and pipes thing which i've promoted it really is a very good conference but where you're looking in the other person's tool chest if you can see the whole thing happening in front of you in one screen how many ideas will come from the ability to associate this with that that you ordinarily don't get because you usually watch things at one thing at a time, not right. all together. Well, in this film, actually, you, you couldn't see this all. I can go watch the surgery or I can watch the pump. I mean, if I'm not the perfusionist, I can watch the surgery. But you can't watch both at the same time, and you can't do that and look at the monitor. So <clears throat> there's no way to do this other than the way we did it. Um, I'm going to ask a question. I would like you to be kind but honest in your answer. I can do that. <laughs> okay. Because it really opens me up. Uh, if you didn't hear the perfusionist or see the perfusionist, would you know who's running the pump? Do what we, are we different enough to affect your surgical field, I guess? Some of you are. Okay. Yes. So. And, and that's just comes with anticipation usually for it tends to be from a more experienced perfusionist but i can honestly speak that there's some guys that have been doing it for 20 30 years that you gotta outline every step and communicate loudly and it's mm -hmm. more effort on my part mm -hmm. i mean and it may not appear to be more effort mm -hmm. but it's like i've got to turn around it's not from this particular group um that i work with joe is be kind. No, I am. I am. You've, I've kind of been the proving ground for a lot of your guys. And, you know, as crazy as heart surgeons are typically, and, you know, and I'm pretty outspoken and a little bit verbose, and I think I'm pretty fair. You are. Um, yeah. But I'm also pretty black and white. I mean, Patrick knows exactly where he stands with me. I mean, he came out of sales for a while, right? Mm -hmm. um, and his learning curve was was better than what I would have expected from where he started. And, and I've made comments that he's doing as well as 
your probably most experienced, Mike Brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's because he actually cares. Mm -hmm. And there's some guys that just want to run the pump. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's and then there, honestly, I think there's some guys that just don't get it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that is, except maybe this could be something that would help them. Mm-hmm. Maybe. maybe I think you're you're bringing up a, a real that's a that's a that's that's a that may be a lot session. that may be a lot that may be a lot yeah, to that's ask. a lot to digest but, but I will say that I but will yes say. The, the short answer is yes I can tell typically who is behind me okay uh, at least I can categorize them into people I, people I don't have to worry about yeah versus people I've got to stay a little bit more on top mm -hmm. of but your current group which is pretty sizable um, the weakest link is very strong. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And that's not, the, that's, not, that's no joke because you know you and I have had our talks about certain individuals that just, just weren't going to cut it and were unsafe. Right. Well, they weren't safe. Yeah. You know, and any other, if they were with any other surgeon, the surgeon would have panicked or whatever. Yeah. And it could have had a bad outcome. You know, you got to be able to communicate and troubleshoot together as, as well. Absolutely. Hello, you're on the air. This is Joe Basha. Hello? Okay, we, we, I don't know what's going on, but it's probably spam calling. Okay, so let's just turn this off. Turn the phone off until we go phone lines open. That's it. Um, I will say that uh, you are very good. You've gotten better at apologizing. So you do, sometimes <laughs> you, you do really, you have done a lot better with that. I'm proud of him for that. Ooh, Let me okay. tell you something okay. right now. Okay, Patrick, I'm sorry. Continue, no, that's sir. okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask one other question before we get started, too. What would you, and I know your answer, Joe, so just hold your answer and just, I know what you're I'm gonna zipping say. it up. What would you say is the job of the perfusionist? Like, what's the core of what we do for you? To make my life easier. And, and by that, that includes a lot of things. It's a simple answer. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, essentially if you're on pump to have a cold, still heart that doesn't move and. Mm -hmm. and um, Bloodless field. Blood is filled. That's within your capabilities of of uh, yeah. performing, and those, um, you know, it doesn't always happen. There's, you know, you move the heart around, et cetera. There's things that I cause that I realize that make it difficult for you as well. Yeah. But um, just basically to make, I, I really want you to be. Not that I don't care who you are, but make it to where you're kind of in the background. Yeah, you're a good supporting cast, so to mm -hmm. speak. And that's not an egotistical comment. It's something that's one less thing I've got to worry about. Anesthesia is another component I got to worry about. Because if I've got new people, I'm trying to teach how to do heart surgery, which I'm doing right now. That's mm -hmm. what I'm focusing on. And if I got to start working on worrying about what's going on behind me, that's a whole other issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so right now, my personal practice, I'm in a great place where I don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I will say that I, to some degree, I, to some degree, disagree with you. Okay. And uh, I, I really don't believe that the perfusionist, nor the scrub, or circulator, or whomever may be in the room, should really be necessarily out of sight, out of mind, and just make this do what it needs to do, so that, uh, so it's what I need. I really think that everyone should understand as best they can. I mean, I'm never going to be able to do heart surgery. Shelly is never going to be able to do heart surgery, but we can. You're making my point though, Joe. You know why? Why? Think of a football team. Yes. If you don't have a good offensive line, because I've got one in my family, my kid, mm -hmm. you, no, nothing else works. That's right. right. So, Consider you guys kind of like the unsung heroes, because if you guys don't do well, it's a, it's a you know what show. But well, my yes, it is. But my point is, how many times do you see an offensive lineman, the center, okay, going up there, and he starts he starts pointing, he starts doing things. He's not just going. To, he took the orders and going to hike the ball. He is a he's seeing something that he needs to communicate. So, you know, my point is is that I think. You know, no one should be, I, that, that's, and I understand what you really meant, but because I do think that, 
that has to be done. It takes finesse to be able to do that. It takes some experience to be able mm -hmm. to do that. To be a facilitator, to see things and to help you as opposed, because sometimes we need we need to communicate. We have to be able to right. talk to you. But I think for the most part, y'all see problems that are coming up that I don't even realize and take care of them. Mostly, yes. Because I'm not a guy that watches the arterial pressure all the time. Right. So what are the what so are the, what who is you and anesthesia? What are the two what are the two worst words you ever you, you never want to hear? <laughs> well, splatting and oh crap. Uh oh yeah uh oh yeah uh oh is bad. I've heard I, I heard that yeah. one time when the Venus line came detached from the pump. <laughs> uh oh <laughs> yeah, and that was pretty scary. I'm sure it was. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right, well uh, we have is this this is the second case right? This is the Dr. Yeah. Matoya case. All right. So let's, we're half an hour into this. We gotta jump in. We have a okay, lot of material. Okay, go ahead, I'm we so sorry. We may not get through mm -hmm. all the cases, but we have lots we're of material. Try. And, you know, we're, we're gonna try. We're actually gonna, yeah, okay. So at uh, one minute and 30 seconds is when we go on pump for this. And we actually kind of just showed that. So we, we, we could- Oh, I'd that, show it again. Okay. I would, I would, in fact, it's a I different, would- It's a different setup. I would go over setup, yeah. all the yeah. different little pieces and talk about each piece. Well, this is, uh, this is a, a, well, we already said it's an ascending, it's a root replacement originally, and then we had to go back on and, uh, and do replace the valve. Which by itself, a root replacement is really not that big a deal, but it becomes a bigger deal. Yeah, so what I was trying to do is preserve the native aortic valve because the leaflets were, were fairly normal in appearance on the TEE. And, and so the plan was to tighten up the She's an older lady, so we want to make this really quick. Tighten up the sinotubular junction. Sometimes simply doing that can allow the leaflets to co-apt better. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that we gave it a shot. It looked pretty competent um, with our saline test, and then we repaired or replaced the ascending aorta. And uh, but on TE afterwards, it just really didn't look so great. Mm -hmm. I, so I was wrong. This is cannulation. This is so we so, can look at that if you want. No, or, uh, let's go to. But I have a, I have a question about this though. So look at that aorta. I mean, yeah, yes. it's huge, right? That's a good point. How do you know that you've got the cannula into the correct lumen when you do this with an aneurysm like that? Oh, it's well. If it's just an aneurysm, it's fine. It's dissections that you have difficulty with. Okay. Okay. So aneurysm is not an issue. Um, and, and it, again, you know, I typically ask you where the pressures are too. Sure. Uh, on the aortic line. So that's kind of basic. But dissections, yes, that is an issue. And that is, uh, I know Manny does more, Dr. Maniscalco does more of those. Mm -hmm. And that is more of a concern for him. But also on TEE, I think, if, and also epi aortic uh, ultrasound, I think that's very important in a dissection to use. You mm -hmm. can. So you're not the false lumen. So you you're can the pretty well identify if you're going to find a spot where you're going to pop right into the false lumen or pop right into the true lumen. I think that that those board questions, especially the oral board questions, how do you recognize this, et cetera? I mean, because you get asked that. Mm -hmm. um, Epi aortic ultrasound eliminates that. In a, in a straightforward aneurysm, it's not an issue. Okay. And typically, I do um, because I don't I don't do a lot of or any really arch replacement because that's just not my deal. So look, you um, see the the venous. I, I can like the arch, so I can get as far up on the anomaly as I can with the uh, graph. Because typically the ones I select pre-op are just strictly ascending only. I don't do any arch work. So now look, you put the venous line in. You've got the venous line in. So let's you see, see where my aortic cannula is. It's pretty high up there. Okay, that was the aortic cannula. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh shit. That's the aorta. That's bad. That's a, oh, that's bad. <laughs> I thought that was the venous cannula. What well, see, that, this is great for <laughs> you, got, then, Joe. It's very educational. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> I got lights in my eyes. I got lights in my eyes. Okay, all right. Good Lord I'll, have I'll mercy. Give you, I'll give okay. you that. Okay. You know, hey, David, you got to edit that out. Okay, <laughs> later on. Don't leave that up there in perpetuity. Okay. You can uh, slide us a copy of that, though, so we have it. Dude, that's a five oh. syllable so, word, bro. <laughs> what? Perpetuity. Perpetuity. Yeah, you're right. Wow. <laughs> I had to use my fingers. You're watching the video and just count off of my fingers here. So I was like, mm -hmm. So did you want to see something more on Kenya? No, I want you to do it. No, I want you to. Okay, we have so much. Let's let's, let's go. Going, to, let's go to going, going, going off. Let's go to that is some neat stuff. See. Twenty-three minutes and fifty seconds, and that's uh, when we initiate bypass. Yeah, we're not going to make the audience suffer through twenty-three oh, minutes. This, of this. this case was ours. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it was two cases. It was two cases. It really was two cases. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> and I tell you, we, we did try to get the. Uh, 
film of the TEE when we were making the decision to go back and put the valve in. Yeah, and I couldn't get. Pretty, it. Yeah, but it was pretty obvious. It wasn't. Here, subtle. watch, Patrick. You're going on pump. Yeah, I'm not the perfusionist here, but. Okay, uh, look at the heart getting smaller, and look over on the right. You'll see the 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 pressure starting to drop down, or should become continuous. Well, the aorta's not thumping either. I mean, right. It's. And you see the reservoirs going up. You can see the venous blood and the t color difference. Look at all and there's flow right there at 4.5. And your pressure monitor. You can you want to go over some of that stuff, Patrick? You're, all your different pressures that you're looking at, what that middle module is showing. Here, sure. Let's see. I mean, it's not all. We we, we haven't given cardioplegia here. Anything, look, so. this is working. Here, hand them that. Don't click anything though. Yeah, you get in a lot of trouble. Magic will come over there. So I'm there. fixing, uh, I guess, the... Like he's the turning Venus on the... Or, right? Yeah, yeah. See, so, And well, see how this happens? You're focused on that, but look, Patrick's tapping buttons. He's actually doing something that's important. <laughs> yeah, no, I and, But you see what I'm saying? This is, and he just made an he's adjustment. He's trying to take care of all that air sucking right. in there. And then he's... And then, <laughs> and look, he's sucking. turning, messing with the Because I think it's the Venus canyon, not the aortic, so... At, uh, at 24, and this is not me doing the pump here. This is, this is another perfusionist. This okay. is Mike. Okay, so, okay. Uh, I was there because we were filming it. But anyway, at 2430, I have a question for you because it looks like we're, we're on pump and then you're repairing what might be a leak around that aortic cannula. Well, that's the, the venous cannula there. I, I yeah, that's that the venous. venous. No. Well, but I know, but where are we on this? Are we at 2450, 20, 24 minutes? I'm sorry. 25, oh. Yeah, so at, you're sucking a bunch of air. No, I know, but this is actually... It, well, it looked like to me like, I guess we don't know the difference. It looked like the aorta came. <laughs> no, we did. It there looked you like go. you were fixing I mean, a, a hole near the aorta, and yeah. I was thinking, why not do that before we go on bypass? Man, I should have looked at this with you. Yeah. Well, what happened? So, so, it was okay, the so, so let me just say, this is an elderly female atria are typically pretty fragile, and then when I pulled or moved the venous cannula inferiorly toward the feet, it, a little hole opened up. Okay. And so you start to suck a bunch of air. Yeah. Uh, something you, you can manage with vacuum, but you know, yeah. it's just, I don't like to worry about that when I'm done. When I'm done with the case, when I'm finished with the case, if I've got another purse string stitch in, it's a lot easier to put in here. I just tie it and I don't have to fix it when the heart's full, you're off pump. And some guys just like to fix holes when they're hard bleeding. I, I just typically like to fix everything before I'm off pump. So that's what that was. I just okay. put another Ramel around it. Mm -hmm. All right. That makes sense. So uh, we've got pl what I believe is placement of the retrograde cannula at 28 minutes, even. If you can get us there, that'd be great. And if I'm wrong on that, then, but that, that is what that is gonna be. I yeah, think. that's gonna be the retrograde. Retrograde, okay. okay. How do you know when that's in? I know everybody's always feeling around down there and trying to figure it out. Man, I you know, I watched David Ott put in so many of these, and it was typical on aortas because he didn't really use it in a lot of hearts. And just the way he put his hand in there, and it, it, when I was there, they were like, okay, you're going to learn how to do heart surgery by just watching the sheer volume of cases. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself, mm, really? i, I got to get my hands dirty, et cetera. I can tell you the first time I did a mitral valve, because they typically didn't let you do mitral valves, was he was in another room, and I asked if I could just keep going. He's like, sure, because I'd seen probably like 100 with him. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, you'd seen so many, you're doing them, and uh, next thing you know, he shows up, and you got everything ready for him, okay? Putting in a retrograde, it's, it's more knowing your anatomy, but watching how these guys did it, and I, if you've noticed when I put it in, I rarely have an issue putting a retrograde in. I know. It's, uh, it's, it's knowing your anatomy. It's knowing the volume is big because mm -hmm. you're draining the coronary sinus, right? Mm -hmm. um, you need to have that orifice open. In this part, I put a little bit of volume in. You can see they're ejecting, okay? And I get my fifth and fourth digit on either side of the cava okay. on my right hand. Yeah. And I lift the heart with my fourth, third, well... Yeah, fourth, third, second, first digit, my, and lift it up, and it just slides right in. The key to it is not to have your coronary sinus cannula so curved. Everybody puts this big bend in it. Mm -hmm. You need to have it a little, a barely a bend in it at all because it'll follow the coronary sinus. If you have too big of a bend, you're going to miss it. 
it's going to go into the ventricle or the atrium. I mean, excuse me, the atrium. Okay. That's where everybody makes a mistake, I'm convinced, is they make it too much of a bend in it because they all have a, a malleable wire in it, mm -hmm. typically. Well, and for most. those people that are watching this that are in the operating room, we all know what you're talking These about. These guys. If anybody's watching that has no clue, they don't even know what a coronary Dude, I'm telling you, so there's, there's so yeah. many surgeons that don't have a clue on doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, by no means am I Denton Cooley, <laughs> okay? I mean, greatest surgeon ever lived. But it's... It, it, it's never been an issue with me putting in, and I've watched tons of surgeons put it in, and they struggle putting a retrograde in. It's no one would ever argue that 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 they that Dr. put Cooley too is the best. big of a bend in it, and they don't know the the anatomy, and they don't typically fill the heart up. It I don't was. like to put retrograde in with the heart on bypass, but you can see we're already on because mm -hmm. of some issue, mm -hmm. and so then I'll typically clamp the line or tell you to fill the heart up a little bit to give me some volume. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you are about to put the clamp on here, and uh, we can pull that back up. You're feeling around. I think you're feeling just find out how deep that aorta goes or something just before yeah, you Yeah, I'm on. making sure that I got, sometimes there's adhesions around there and you want to make sure you get all the way across, obviously. So, and okay. I'm also kind of going on to the underside of the arch. <laughs> so watch bit. this. So you're going to turn the flow down. Watch the flow come down. Or it it's down. Off, See that? Pretty much, yep. it's I'm off squeezing pump. my fingers. I'm trying to get as much. Look at the blood pressure drop. You're going as deep as you can and we're helping that by lowering the and pressure. I'm right on the fight. canyon because I'm on the arch and, and now look, he came back up on the flow. Up, oh, yeah, came back up on the flow, and look at the and pressure please. come back go. up. You have cardioplegia. There's rolling. the ice. You saw the reservoir volume. That is so cool, Patrick. So look at the STs. And, Wham. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's not working anymore. <laughs> not working. <laughs> no, that's all right. Okay. There it is. Yeah, there it, it is right it. there. There it is. Because you can okay. watch these these numbers down here. This is the. Uh, let's see. I can't. It's kind of far away from me, but uh, I think this. This one, this is the arterial pressure, and then down here is the, where's the cardioplegia pressure at? Right You're there. You're on it, yeah, it's right above yeah, that. Yeah, right there. So those are the two pressures we really want to want to focus on. Here, oh, I see, here and here. And so the heart's still kind of moving around. We can see it on the EKG. But we and don't have a root, the root bin's so not, not on yet because we're still giving pleage. Look, so, right. so look, see, I've never seen this right. before. Yeah, and the anagrade. Cardio pleage is still going. Right yes, here. look at root it. Root bin's not on yet because you don't want that on. Root vent Suckers is on, not on, obviously. Right. LV vent. I use an and look LV at the, look vent. look at the heart stop. Directly to the root. And look at, look at your aorta, how puffed up it is. Yeah. Because look down here, it's your pressure. What's that say? I can't see it. 160, I think. 160? 145, maybe. 155, yeah. So the pressure in the root is 150, well, in the line. But that probably translates to about an 80, probably in the actual yeah. vessel itself. Yeah, I don't know. That's a line pressure, not, not a uh, retrograde. vessel pressure. Yep. So you see the root vent come on, and we should see the aorta kind of And watch right down. here. And you'll see this filled with blood. And I switch it up top to retrograde. Correct. So what, you'll see this filled with blood here. Sure, can you see it now? And I tell Patrick to put an LV vent on, although I just have it in a well right now because the aorta's not. Here it is, right here, the root vent. Yeah, here. So you see, it's full of blood. There it is. Because I don't put a superior pulmonary vein vent in. It goes directly to the root. Gotcha, gotcha. That's another David Ott thing. He, uh, his philosophy, I think it was kind of unsaid, was the more holes you put in the heart. The more, the more holes place, you gotta close. The more holes you gotta close and the more likely bleed. you are to bleed. That's right. And he always just stuck it through the root. So you kind of get eye blind to the, it, it, when you're first doing it on your own, you kind of get, you're, you're kind of frazzled by this root vent in your way, taking a valve out, putting stitches in. Yeah. And then after a while, you've done so many, you become blind to it. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of, it's like, you know, smelling sweaty feet all day long. Something else. You know, finally get used to it and when you're in the locker room, you know. Yeah, so something kind of gross, I want, but it know, is. That's a good but analogy. I mean, but it's, it's you become eye blind. Yeah, so let me point out. You notice how much slower this is turning now. We're giving retrograde versus the antegrade. If you looked at it when it was doing the antegrade, it was moving much faster than this. And look at the aorta; it's completely and collapsed. Now, look so. at that! Look at that! Yeah, look at that! That is incredible. And I typically want you to stop sucking on it when I cut it open. And you. actually, actually, the, yeah, look, he just turned the root vent off because you're going to want to open it. Yeah, he's about to, uh, at 20, at 3530 is when you open the aorta. But then at uh, 43 minutes and 10 seconds is the greatest picture of the coronary osteums. It's really cool. Let's watch this. And I think uh, we're giving retrograde plegia or something at that time. You can see it coming out. So I'm trying to get a little more room on the. 
the root here to identify the coronaries. And while you're doing that. This is what you're doing if you do do a bin tall. But I Mm -hmm. I wouldn't plan it on it, but I wanted to get as far down as I could and preserve the coronaries. And And what I want to show is, look, you're doing this. Look at Mike. You're doing that. Mike is actually doing something. And (laughs) Shelly, who's not pictured, is leaning over, looking at where you are, trying to anticipate your next move. Mm -hmm. And so it, it really is a symphony. It really is, if you think about it. This is a, it's a symphony that's actually occurring. Uh, Patrick, I think this is just a, I, I am in love with all of this imagery. I really yeah. am. Yeah, well, my hope is that we'll also bring this to, uh, you know, I'd like to give it to some perfusion schools. And let yes. Them, you know, look this over. That's a great idea. So they're uh, at about 11 o'clock coming into the field is my LV vent. It's on, but it's not in there yet. But I did have it in the well, just kind of just as an extra sucker. Again, you don't have to, and, and you know, earlier I was talking about how great I am at putting in the retrograde coronary sinus cancer. Uh-huh. I'm terrible at putting in a superior pulmonary vein vent. I can't oh, get it through man. the mitral valve. Yeah. So uh, for me, it was, you know, I did this, so I do this. So. You just basically take a drop sucker, and yeah. st- a weighted mm-hmm. sucker, if it's a really big, wiggly, whatever you want to call it. If it's a really it. big one, you can put a wiggly in, but otherwise I use a like 10 or 12 French with a malleable wire in it, which, as you well know, took a while to get Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, super handy. You can move it to different places. Um, and a tribute to Dr. Safi. I don't know if you can see it in here. I'm sure you will at some point. Uh, he always used a, a coolie scissor for retraction from the assistant. And so really? I've, I've done that to this day as wow. well. Stick. It's, an, it's got a nice curve to it. So it's right under the um, atria, um, arteria, uh, aortotomy rather, uh-huh. and gives you a nice little lift so you can cut the valve out, put the stitches in, etc. You can slide it around. Uh, and you Here it goes. Look. A... Here it goes. You're getting ready to cut yep. it. There you go. You're in it. And look, you stuck the sucker in there. He's probably going to say, turn the sucker up. Mm-hmm. Let's watch and see if Mike does it. That's right down here. I think Mike's no, doing going great, fast enough. Yeah, I think Mike's doing a great job. So I don't think you'd have had to tell me to turn it up. Might have been going slower. So that again is the LV vent that's just sticking out in the middle of the field. That little piece of plastic. I haven't utilized right. it yet. Right. This right here. This uh, right the there. anagrade's coming out. Right. We don't need that anymore. Right. Yeah, the LV vent goes right through that valve at uh, thirty-five minutes and thirty. And seconds. we imagine that all of this stuff all of these things when you're putting stitches in and you're having to move them like when you do the valve and i think we'll see it they can get hung up on that stuff (laughs) i mean there's enough stuff in there i try to limit the number of and this is tony after she's put on a on the uh anagrade she's super strong i have to use a hemostat to get it off but um you knew that the scrub nurse was Tony, just by how, by that. Because I had, because <coughs> yeah. Okay. Was was she the scrub? Yeah. Yeah, of course. No, I I, I just don't know how you, you knew because well, of how tight the cardiac can't get, If I can't unscrew the integrate <laughs> from, from your line, it's, it's typically Tony. Tony. <laughs> That's funny. Now this, what you see here, this should be a complete straight line, but this is artifact. Yeah, this isn't. This the is Trust not. Trust me, I'd be screaming. Right, the heart you can see is mm-hmm. not moving at all. I mean, here's the, the, you know, down here. It is not moving. And Mike's watching his level so, here, his pressures. Right, and so basically I'm gonna make a, a longitudinal uh, aortotomy, and then I'm gonna make some cuffs right here, approximately distally. I'm digging down toward the left main right here to make sure we don't get too close to the left main because I want to make a nice sinotubular junction. Now I'm going more toward the head and toward the aorta cannula. I get pretty close to the aorta cannula. There's usually, if it's a normal aorta, right before the arch, a nice cuff inside there, transition zone. And uh, on this one, uh, it's pretty straightforward that it was there. This is not a huge aneurysm. It's about almost six, but it's a pretty small lady. Uh, And her disease process was AI. So um, that's really all she had. There goes our vent. There's aortic insufficiency, Correct. AI. There's the vent. It just went through the aortic yep. valve. Yeah, we just saw you drop it in. Vent. So the valve gets a little bit of sclerosis with it. You can see that on the left coronary cusp there at about 11 o'clock. Um, so again, I'm going to leave that right if the valve's competent because it's 78 years old or however she is. She's, 
I, she, I, yeah, yeah she, I, she's in her late seventies. I was going to leave it. Um, but her valve, when I looked at it, was pretty asymmetric, which I think led to her inability to fix her um, uh, AI, mm -hmm. or at least for me to do it. Tyrone David probably could have done it, but I just. So then he just took the drop. I gave it a shot. Out. I gave it a shot, and there it goes again. And you see it fill with blood. You see it flash. So that's my LV vent. I don't like. I said I don't. You could go through the superior pulmonary vein. And it, it, yeah, it's a, at first it's a little bit disturbing. It seems to be in the way, but you can put stitches in. You can use your Ramel tourniquets to hold it in place in other places. This is, you know, it's just a lot of ways you can get it out of your way to do the surgery, especially in an aneurysm. It's pretty easy to get it out of there and ignore it because the annulus is pretty big typically. So at, at 4310, if we can go up there, I think we're real close to that, but uh, at 43 minutes, 10 seconds, we're giving retro. We're going to give retrograde cardioplegia, and you can see it coming out of the uh, coronary ostia. Okay, so oh, look, look at the leaflets. So now I'm looking at the leaflets with the yeah. with the uh, accepto, the bulb syringe. I'm trying to get an idea of if I can fix this, or if I just need to chop it out. I'm really trying to talk myself into mm -hmm. leaving this alone, or maybe tighten up the commissures or something to to save this valve. And right there at six o'clock where the aseptos going in, you can see the right coronary ostium. It's huge. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Right. I see. Where is this thing? There's oh, a there it is. Right, right, right there. Right. There. right so you there. can see the blood drifting in. I think this one blood came through the right coronary through the whole case for some reason. Oh yeah. Uh, even though the heart was stopped and flaccid, but anyway. That is a really cool view of the right coronary. You said we have an even better view, right? Uh, no, We're, that's it. That's it. And, that was it. That's it. And well, we have more, but that was the best picture of the right coronary. And we're just about to give cardioplegia typically, now, retrograde. Yeah, uh, typically, you know, um, the problem with retrograde, as we all know, is do you protect the right heart? Another thing I took from uh, Dr. Safi um, was anti-grade osteal cardioplegia. Oh, here we go. Here Mike's comes our, cardio, our cardioplegia. Here's the retrograde. Don't watch. Look at that. Look at and that. And I'm giving. So, dude, do you see that? Oh, no, he's giving, he's giving it. An oh, yeah, that's anagram. Okay, you're and giving so it on through the... A straightforward aortic valve, like a replacement, I'll give at least one shot through the right and left main. Uh, it's a little bit time-consuming, um, but I've found that it, the right heart really comes back with at least one shot during one of these. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, my cross clamp for a traditional aortic valve is less than an hour, um, you know, anywhere from... 38 to 52 minutes is kind of my average. Mm -hmm. I know it doesn't sound like a, it sounds specific, but it's really not. Yeah, because if you give, if you give, if you're giving anti-grade cardioplegia on a patient with aortic insufficiency, a lot of that cardioplegia is, is going not waste. going down Correct. the coronaries. It's going Correct. directly into the LV, the left right. ventricle. And this, this, this shot down there really, I think helps a lot. And there you go to the um, left. In rest, because retrograde just doesn't seem to, just does not work uh, as well, especially when you're sicker, thicker, uh, Ventricle, ventricle patients. Now, Delnito is something I'm interested in uh, as far as something like this. Yeah, we goes. did a session on, on, on Delnito cardioplegia. For my minimally invasive stuff. Yes. So we'll talk well, about that. Yeah, but you don't need it. For the aortics? Oh, for the aortics, you do, yes. Not the mitrals. Not for the mitrals, yeah, that's the hyperkalemia yeah, technique. Hyper, yeah. So, why don't we uh, move right on up to 56 minutes and 35 seconds? This is the retrograde uh, that I want everybody to see coming out through the uh, coronary ostia. So that's going to go in here in just a minute. There we go. Okay, suckers up, belly vents up, plegia is going slow because it's retrograde. If you look in the bottom right corner, yeah. So, right here. And, and we can see the pressure the on the yep. retrograde. There's that. that. Now let's watch. I think he wants to see something. Oh, oh look at yeah, look at okay, that's just the there's the level right there. And up in here you want to see oh, this thing's horrible. I remember this being really dark blood coming out here. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. It passes through oxygenated and makes <laughs> you know, passes through several inches of heart and becomes out comes out dark. It's pretty impressive. Comes out Venus. Yeah, comes out. And that's a real good sign that uh, O2 has been extracted. Yep, and that's things. what you look for, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, the potassium and everything else. 
there, there it is. It's much nicer. It's darker. Look, I'm washing a little bit there, but because I'm looking yeah, at yeah, diluting it, but uh, he'll tell he'll clear that out. So watch. So if you look at this valve, I mean, see how asymmetric it is from a surgeon's standpoint. It's almost the the right coronary cusp is almost fifty percent of the circumference. Yes. Look at that, because mm -hmm. it almost goes straight across, right? Yes. And then the left and the non-coronary are like a quarter a piece, a little bit more probably. So that's why, it's, that's why in addition to their aneurysm, it failed. Gotcha. So it's a, it was a fairly, the leaflets themselves, the, the quality was pretty good, but the, the, they just wouldn't the symmetry, collapse. well, the symmetry was wrong. There's mm -hmm. one leaflet that's super long and the other ones were short. Okay. Short. To, uh, for lack of a better, relatively short. All right, so we've seen that. We can go up to one minute, 17 seconds, and four, uh, 40, I'm sorry, one minute, 17, one hour, 17 minutes, and 45 seconds. So here I'm, uh, yeah, I put some com commissural sutures in, try to tighten things up, uh, repair it. Now we're doing the uh, um, proximal anastomosis because I want to look down the tube here and that's exactly what I wanted everybody to see was yeah, the way not, you're filling it up. To yeah, see it so from, we'll, yeah. we'll do this uh, running suture all the way around, recreate the sinotubular junction to tighten it up and hopefully coax those leaflets together uh, to test that. And there's really no other way to test it. You can't do it under pressure except when they're off pump. But we'll do it with the aseptic and saline. And, you know, it looks pretty good. But bottom line, at the end of the day, when we come off, it doesn't look that good on echo. And right. So, uh, we never reversed um, and went back on and just, uh, I went through the graft itself and just replaced it. Uh, so now I think this is going to be interesting for Shelly because Shelly sees this part. She can easily see what you're doing here. But I think where, where, where it's tough for us and tough for any clinician that's in the room besides you and maybe your first assistant will be what Patrick wants to show you. So you want to you wanna speed up to that point? That part? What, where, uh, yeah, we should be. Um, okay, one minute. One this. hour, 19 minutes, and 45 seconds. If you go to there, that's where we're, we're filling the. Because this uh, is the, the part that I think that we don't see, unless you want to, unless, you know, somebody's looking over your shoulder or wanting to well, see. Well, I think I had everyone there. look at this point. Yeah, probably. You, you do, but a lot of people do not. And a lot of people. I usually do. like to show people what we're dealing with. Yes. Because most people don't. Like, especially an assistant on a mitral valve, they never see what they're assisting right. on. So, Shelly, how many times have you ever seen that view? Well, since I scrub, I see it. But when well, you're no, not assisting, this. if you're no, in the back. This, yeah, I'm talking about that down view, the right hole down yeah. the hall. Yeah. Mm -mm. I mean, I would say very only two people in the room, generally speaking, are going to have that view. Yeah. Unless they have cameras. And Where? somebody's focusing it. Where is the LV vent right now? Is it, it's, you it's took it out? You took it out. Okay, all right. Yeah. So I washed the ventricle out, try to get as much yeah. blood out as possible so I could see the leaflets and then started squirting saline in to get a clear view of it. So again, I want to test it again and suck all the blood out. For our perfusion colleagues, usually we, I, you know, we don't like you to use the pump sucker for that. I know. Okay. But I don't care at this point. So when my perfusion colleagues out there, let's see. Can I ask why? It, it dilutes your... Um, um, it, it dilutes your uh, blood okay. volume, basically. You're adding volume, and you don't need to add it. Just because you're irrigating? So it's a pretty good shot there. Have and you got some uh, YouTube chat questions, Joe, coming through? N no. Oh, okay. So I'm feeling okay, but my backup plan is, um, I mean, it's pretty simple. I'm not concerned about it. It's just simply replace the thing. Yeah. Um, the um, so so you there, there's a great view. So it looks like it's going to co out pretty well there. All right. So uh, let me see. What we can do is we can go to uh, one hour twenty seven minutes even. Look at that. Look at that though. I know. There's some really good. That is good straight shot. Tool. Yeah, one hour and 27 minutes. What we got to show you here is uh, there's the artifact, which we noticed. On the oh, yes. So, so you look here, look, look. So the saline's staying in there. 
Oh, it looked like it was going to work. I mean, it sure. looks yeah. like it's going to work. Look. Yeah. Yep. So once I got the leaflets to do what I wanted them to do, uh, uh, it looks pretty reasonable. And the sinuses themselves were not aneurysmal, so that's why I didn't do a complete ventol at the end of this. Mm -hmm. So what Mike is doing here is he's got some lube. He's putting it around the raceway on the sucker. And you can see when he turns the sucker off now that the well, EKG go, well, is flat. Well, wait, go back. Because you see, you're, you, you, let's do this. Go, go, back just a, go back just a few seconds. Okay, right here. Okay, look. Look at the artifact right here. Okay, it almost looks like the heart's beating. And that can be pretty confusing if, you th if you're thinking there's electrical activity. Well, if the surgeon's not yelling at you, it's probably not. Right, exactly. That's true. <laughs> but still, nevertheless, some, some surgeons should be surprised. Now, now, watch him do the loop. So you see the artifact. Now, let's watch him do it. So, so they see that. <laughs> I told you this works. No, wait till you see it work. Wait till you see this. No, this is, this is good stuff. Do we have the... Uh, do we have the lube in the tube? Where'd it go? Hmm? Oh, it's uh, we got to go to um, one hour twenty seven minutes. So you saw the artifact, and then just here in a minute he's gonna stop the. Uh, when he stops that sucker, the artifact goes away. So we know that. Okay, that's so the you see, he opened the pump head. Look. See the artifacts gone? Interesting. Oh, so now look, look at that. now look, now, now this is Mike doing basically a prostate exam on the, uh, on the pump. Now he turns it back on and look, it's gone, but watch this, watch the consequence, the consequence of lubing the tube. Watch this pump head right here. Watch this. Keep an eye on it. Don't take your eyes off of it. He's going to put some more. He's going to lube the tube some more. <laughs> Mike wasn't happy. He didn't get deep enough, so he needed to put some more, more lube. Now let's watch. Keep an eye on this pump head. You know what he's doing? Dude, I'll tell you what's funny about this. Did he's you see it? Yeah. Was... Did you see it? Did you see what happened? Go back just about five seconds. Go back, go back a little teeny bit. That's okay, just let it run, let it run. Don't go back, don't go back, don't go back. Don't go back, just keep an eye on the pump head. Keep an eye on the pump head. It jams. Yeah, the tubing starts creeping through there. Yeah, go ahead the, and let it run. Because of the lube and all that. He turned it off. No, now he's taking the lube out. Okay, Mike, Mike, you lubed the tube. And too that much. Was That's too it. much lube. That's okay. Awesome, but now it's perfect. So can you go back just like, go back 20 seconds and just play. I'll tell you what the most impressive part of that was. I didn't even know that was going on. Right, right. I mean, I'm little. I mean, he, he, he did it when I was using the cell safer sucker in there. Yes. Did you so, notice that? Yes. Well, no, because the pump, the pump sucker stops working and you switch to it. Just, you just go back like 20 seconds. Now watch that pump head. You'll see it bounce up and when it jams. Now, see, you went back too far. Just, just like 10 seconds, one minute, 17 seconds, or whatever, one hour, whatever it was. All right, lube is good, that's all. <laughs> yeah, hold on, we're, we're, we can we're, move on if you like. No, I really want them to see this. I really want you to see this. This is classic. <laughs> this is classic Mike Brown. Troubleshooting. Yeah. Okay. That that's more than t guys. Let me ask you, where was the where was the the lube in the tube? The f uh, first time is at uh, one hour twenty seven minutes. So go to one hour twenty six minutes. Well, then we have a whole minute to wait for yeah. till him to, till he does. Okay, it. but he can't do seconds. I mean, you're asking him to do too much. <laughs> Should we, you want to take a commercial break and get back to no. this? No. <laughs> okay. I think this is the first, the first lube event. <laughs> I just want to watch it again, all right? Can I just be entertained? <laughs> now well, watch it. Just watch it. It works. Yeah, no, it, it does work, but the consequences. Oh, come on. Watch the tube. Come on. Watch the pump. See, you're trying to use the you pump go, sucker. Mike. That's the pump go, sucker. Mike. That's the pump sucker in your hand, okay? The pump sucker. No, that's the. That was. That's the that's pump the sucker. Safer sucker. With the light. Well, the, one, the one on the, the at three o'clock is, is, is the lighted is the, cell saver sucker. Okay. 
It's it's different than a regular. All right. It's lighted. Just watch the watch it watch it watch it jam watch it by invuity. Watch it. There it goes. It just jammed. I saw the pump head pop up, and he's like, "Uh oh, shoot! Now what am I gonna do? Oh, let me turn it backwards." I'm using the pump circuit. Let me try to get some of that out. I guarantee you, I did not. Oh yeah, see, you're trying to use it. It's not working. I told you. I didn't even notice. Now, now it's see. You just tried to use it. Mike, I didn't even notice. All right, all right, go on. All right. Okay. So, good job, Mike. So, do (laughs) do we want to? uh, So, what do do we want to do? Any discussion? What do we want to do? Well, uh, we we can go on down a couple more things. And there's a couple more events to talk about. And let's talk about some more events. Go to go to your next one. There's Mike wiping the wiping the gel. There you go. Yeah, that's perfect. That's That's kind of like when you go get your prostate checked. They hand you a little piece of of wax paper. Like, what good is is that gonna do? Oh, it's seven o'clock. yeah, we know, we know. No, we, we're gonna go through a couple more things first. Okay, Let's one more things. Go to one hour and forty-two minutes. And what we're gonna see here is uh, we're giving retrograde cardioplegia to fill the conduit, I believe, to, mm-hmm. to get to de air. So we should see that kind of fill up here in a minute. Man, I am. Look at that. You are. I know. This was I didn't the, even realize this that. This was the shortest, the shortest um, aortic root replacement, what? followed by well, I, followed by by valve conduit <laughs> that I've ever seen in my life. You know, you beat Cooley's time. Of whatever. I didn't use a running suture for my valve. I don't know how he ever did that. That was amazing. All okay, right. So, so we're given retrograde now. And to check and, his and anastomosis. We should, we should see the, yeah, the, the, the conduit fill up. Yep. So let's watch that. So you want to watch this? So I just stick the LV vent. That's the other thing about having the LV vent through the root. You can stick it wherever you want. Uh-huh. So now he's running closed. this pump head right here. Just, and I'm watch gonna, that fill up right here. I'm going to put the vent in, anti-grade, retrograde vent now. Yep. So you should start seeing this. So you... You, now, now, of course, the pressure you're going to get from that's going to be fairly slim. It's just to help you put the suture in. You're not testing exactly. your Exactly. No, 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 I'm not testing it with that. Right. I'm de-airing. Um, I'm also filling it up so I don't back wall it. Not that that's an issue. Um, but also just time to get pleaged. Mm-hmm. You know. And when you say back wall, you got to remember, depending on who's watching, a surgeon's yeah. going to understand that. Maybe somebody as old as me right. might understand that. But most people are but not going to get that. Snagging the other side of the conduit where it's going to pinch it off and that's just bad technique from a surgeon standpoint mm-hmm. that's like having a that's like having a, a, a garden hose with a clamp over it correct yeah part of it yeah so you're about to stick the uh the integrate needle in through the conduit. and we had done this previously through the aneurysm took it out because we didn't we resected the aneurysm now i have a question for you mm-hmm. does that does that dacron is it dacron it is. Is that right? Does that act like tissue? Because you, you put a normal purse string around it. Does it act like tissue when you close that purse string up? Mm. In terms of hemostasis? Surprisingly, yeah. But it's because uh, th- this is hemoshield platinum. I'm not a huge fan of because the edges fray. If you really look closely, I've everted the edges approximately for right sure. Right here, yeah, I can kind of see it. Where I, I folded it back about. on itself. Right here. And so you get a double wall of the uh, of the uh, graft itself sewn to the aorta. It typically leaks less. Mm-hmm. The edges fray a whole lot. Um, if you do bypass grafts off of it, you'll tip off of it. You'll typically use an eye burner, an ophthalmic burner, mm-hmm. to like you would if you're tying a ro- a knot on rope. Mm-hmm. You cut it. You burn it with a lighter at yeah. the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it keeps it from unraveling. Frame. Yeah. That's the problem with hemoshield platinum. Hemoshield gold really doesn't have that problem, but for whatever reason, and, and maybe I so now you some, had a hard time getting that in. Well, it's tough. Yeah, it's not enough pressure. It hold, it's not enough pressure. Uh, so if you see, I'm lifting up both ends of that a horizontal mattress suture mm-hmm. to get some uh, purchase mm-hmm. and some resistance. So I, then I so use a eleven blade. Eleven blade, yeah, that, that always because that needle hold. didn't work very well. But just little technical things here. This is a ramel with pledgets, so I can just tie it at the end when I'm done. 
At this point, are we? No, we're not even rewarming yet, are we? I can see the uh, temperatures the right temperature here. Twenty-eight down below four. There. Look, right here, twenty-eight right. four and twenty-nine five degrees. That's centigrade for anybody that's non. Uh, So um, let me see here. What could we do I, I next? You know what we should do? We probably should take a break right now because okay. all that's left is we're going to take the clamp off, and then we're going to basically do this surgery again by replacing the valve. And okay. that could be the second half of our show. Okay, that's fine. That'll be okay. good. All right. all right, so why don't we do that? We'll take a break, and Dr. Matoyer had to take a quick telephone call. He's, uh, he's still working, and uh, we'll, you, why don't you guys take uh, five minutes or so? Use the restroom, fill up your perfweb cup, perf cups that we sent you in case you need to get one. Make sure you don't leave without one. Okay, this is a party gift. And um, uh, we got to order some more. And we'll be back in about five minutes. urgent letter from the ABCP. Oh wow, I wonder what this could be. To Joe Basha from the ABCP. Wow, this looks official. Dear Certified Clinical Perfusionist, the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion is advising you that you must submit 10 Category 1 CEU by next week or you will lose your certification. Sincerely, Dave Matthews, PhD, Roger Ramirez, PhD, and the executive co-directors. Let me call my immediate supervisor, Stephanie, and ask her if I can go. This is perfect. Yes, Stephanie. Hi, this is Joe. Hi, Joe. Stephanie, I just got an urgent letter from the ABCP stating that I am 10 CEU short and I've been looking at this New Orleans conference and I'd like to submit my request to go to that because I really need the credits. Uh, geez, Joe, uh, I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to help you. Administration informed me they're denying all meeting requests. I guess you're going to have to find another way to get your seizures. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, there's nothing I can do. You're on your own, Joe. Sorry. I'm taking this up the chain of command. Come in. Dr. McGilvery. Hey, Joe. I don't... <laughs> Thank you for seeing me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I do not have enough CEUs to maintain my certification. Joe, how is that my problem? Our role is to pay you to do perfusion, not to pay you to go take courses. And it was that way in the past, but we just don't have the money to do it anymore. So you're going to have to figure it out on your own. Joe, what's up? Dr. Lumsden. I do not have enough CEUs to maintain my certification, and I'm going to lose my certification. If we can take all the perfusions the way we can do any cases, we don't have enough perfusionists. I don't care about these CEUs. Cost too much money. You got to stay here and do these cases. Figure out some other way you're going to get education. 
Hey Joe, you received another uh, urgent letter from the ABCD. Oh, thank you. Dear Certified Clinical Perfusionist, the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion regrets to inform you that because you lack enough Category 1 CEU, your certification is suspended. You are no longer a Certified Clinical Perfusionist. Oh no. Hmm, I really want to go to this meeting. Hey Joe, you received a letter from your job, man. Hey, dude, thank you so much. Dear Joe Basha, the Health and Happiness Hospital regrets to inform you that because you lost your ABCP certification to a, due to a lack of Category 1 CEUs, you are fired. You must report immediately to the operating room and clean out your locker to make room for your replacement who clearly knew more than you about getting CEUs and maintaining their certification. HET Perfusion. Oh, okay. We have an open heart one month from today, 9 a.m. start. Oh, really? A single vessel off pump? No problem. Thank you. Hey, Mom, can you bring me a sandwich?
welcome back to the show. Hope everybody got a good break. Okay, so we're going to open the phone lines. So we'll put that notification up that you can call in. And I've got the phone here in case that was you trying to call earlier and I couldn't answer at that time. You got to wait till we say open the phone lines. Uh, we still have the YouTube chat on. So if anybody wants to do that um, and um, let's continue with Patrick. Patrick. Okay. So we're going to pick this surgery up where the cross clamp is about to come off for the first time on this case. And uh, this is Dr. Matoyer's uh, own personal way of, that he came up with on how to, uh, how to de-air. So that's at one hour, 46 minutes. If you can roll and we can kind of talk about how we do this. It involves uh, anti-grade and retrograde and all kinds of nah, That's my own thing. <laughs> but it does serve a purpose. Yeah, well, it seems to work, so. Uh, but you invented this. So look, uh, <laughs> look I'm sure there's a lot of guys that do this. Look, just, Mike's running it up. Mike's running it up. I'm trying to de-air. I'm trying to test the anastomoses, de-air. Mainly it's to de-air and test the anastomosis, but I really want to get all the air out, so. Well, you must be getting retrograde. You're probably giving retrograde. Retrograde to try right to now, because I'm waiting for it to come up through the. Okay, there, there it goes. goes. Now it comes up. And you're getting some air out there, probably. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the anti-grade part of it, and the vent's already hooked up. And then I'm switching back and forth up there, um, communicating that, of course. My LV vents. Oh, you always tell us everything you're doing. There's no question about I do. that. Mm. I do. I do. You know mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. I tell you. Mm -hmm. I think uh -huh. I, I would. I'm, the best I'm, one. I'm gonna agree with you on that because during this time, you are communicating because there's a lot of switching going on. There's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's because he knew he was on camera. Uh huh. <laughs> right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, because it's a little weird, a little different. And All right, this, so we're going no. anti-grade now. I think. Yep. Yes, because you see it's distended. See the the root right here is just right. This. There it is right there, right there, distended. And I'm, and I'm poking it to see how tight it is. What's your pressure, Patrick? What's your pressure? What's your pressure? And our pressure's right here. What's yeah, it we say? know the pressure. I usually get it up to about, it says, or at least the measured pressure, about 180. So the stop, the systemic oh, pressure. So right there, it's 74. So see, I can't, I can't get this. Okay, now we're going to switch right. to, to retrograde again. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's... And what a lot of people don't don't also realize is the whole time all of this is happening. Every time I'm doing this, though, it's anti-grade, correct? Yeah. Right. But Mike, this whole case, and I'll bet very few of us have paid attention to this reservoir right here. Keeping this full is critically important to this whole procedure. Mm -hmm. We can't run that out of blood because if we do, we got a big problem. Right. Now your pump flows down. You can see the arterial pump head. I take the pressure clamp drops. Off. Clamp comes off. And then we are, I believe we do come off pump, and then that's when you decide to go back on. Right, so essentially suture line is, he was static. I, I really try to fix everything with the heart clamped, or at the very least on pump. It's just a lot easier. Of course, in these aneurysms, the suture lines bleed until you get protamine, typically, but uh, from a needle hole standpoint. Uh, De-airing a little bit. Heart's filling up. Just trying to decompress it. There we go. Tap it. Uh -huh. And look up here. You can see a little bit of activity is trying to come back. Right. But now it's being perfused. Mm hmm So root vents on. Oh, you're going to defibrillate it because you got fibrillation. Mm -hmm. LV vents on. So these on. are the paddles. Yeah. See the paddles going in. And watch the heart jump. Watch it. Oh, didn't see it. Oh, you could have do it again. Well, I did it again because I was uh, giving a cheap shot. It okay, let's good. watch it. Let's watch it. He's, they're charging it. You can't hear it, but it's going big, Whoa. thick heart. Pop. See the pop? There you go. We, so we did remove the audio. You asked us, you know. Said, this is yeah, the audio. Take. You're not going to be using that, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Well, in it there. is a heart yeah. surgery. And there, <laughs> yeah, there is a good reason for that, folks. There is a good reason for that. We'll narrate it. Okay. There you go. Right. Look at that. You've reestablished so, your rhythm. Then we'll fill the heart. Um, and you know what? Let me say something. Look, right look at the. I mean, you can tell by that EKG. 
I mean, you, protection is pretty good. Yes. Pretty, pretty good, but, pretty strong. But see what I see right here? You know what that tells me? Do you know what that tells me right there? It tells me the same thing it's going to tell you. Love it, AI. We're on full, yep. Mm -hmm. We're on full bypass. And you got flow. And you're seeing know, pulsatility. Rocks, man. Right. I know, I got a second plan. It was my first plan, but I thought I'd give her, I told her I would give it a shot. So we come off bypass at, uh, if you can go to one hour, 55 minutes and 50 seconds. And that's just going to be filling and coming off for the first time. EKG is looking pretty good, though. Oh, back on pump. Cross good job, Mike Brown. On. You went too soon. You went too long. Oh, See, it says one hour. Oh, it should be one hour, 55 minutes, and 50 seconds. That, that was it? Because no, it well, it's too far then, I guess. Well, now it says... See, that said back on pump. Yeah, we've seen, we, well, have we, we haven't really seen Well, maybe you haven't come off yet. yet. Maybe that was just to go to fill the heart or whatever, but it looks like you're trying to come off right we, now. We go back on at two hours and six minutes. Okay, okay, so, so let's just do this. I don't know where we are. Right? Look, there, we're coming Mike off Mike just now. clamped the tube. Look at that, he clamped it right there. You are off pump. Blood pressure's 102 over six, over, uh, oh, let's drop it a little bit. And if you if you look here, the pulse pressure is pretty wide for a low. It should yes, be a pretty right narrow here. pulse yes. pressure. Yeah, I mean that's, just from that number. That's another indication of yeah. AI because you're not getting a good diachronic notch. So yeah. why would that valve hold hold the water when you? I mean, is it just because of the way? It's it, pressure. It's just it's, more it's pressure. Just, okay. Yeah, it's just a lot more pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have more pressure, it just it just wasn't gonna. And maybe to the geometry, you know, where you're, it's squeezing, it's opening, and then well, yeah, I mean, it's lots and, of different things. I mean, because again, the the leaflets were very asymmetric. I mean, it was mm -hmm. pretty obvious there. You could see that the the right coronary leaflet was <laughs> big. Yeah, because the those, others were like it was like it was like um, a, a quarter, a quarter and a half, and mm -hmm. that's just not normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going back on. That's yeah, we're going to go on, on at... That's because uh, they're going back on. I uh, said, so, nah, this ain't going to work. Two hours and six back minutes on pump. and 20 there seconds. Mm -hmm. I mean, we made a quick decision because it was pretty obvious. I mean, it right. was... Right. I mean, it was moderate. It wasn't... It, she could have she could have survived it and done well and been off pump and probably but, done okay. So we're... But it's we're, not... We're, we're there to fix her aneurysm mainly uh, uh, in addition to her valve, but it was... Uh, the valve was not severe mm -hmm. by any means. Okay, so your are you going to clamp the on. conduit? No, I'm, I'm okay. still above the conduit. Right, okay. So it's a good thing the aortic uh, cannula was up so high. Well, that's why I put it on the I put it in the mid arch if I can. Because you, as far up as you put the cannula, it's never far enough. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. Okay. That's a real good point. All right, so that's why I always appreciate the work those aortic guys do, like Caselli and Safi, and I mean that's just you know big brass one surgery, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And Manny, I mean, he does a fair amount of it too, Maskelco. Mm -hmm. So we're resting the heart again and a great cardioplegia. If you can move on to uh, two hours, ten minutes, and ten seconds. Again, if you see that the LV vent in the bottom right corner is still rolling, it's it, at that point, it's still just in the well. I use that as an extra sucker in the well when the aorta is closed. I do not go, I, I just cut the graft open here. This is a, it's not a calcified valve. Easy, real easy to come out. This is. So you're uh, cutting the, you're cutting the valve out I'm cutting out here, leaflets right? out. Yeah, okay. it's super easy here. So if you look at the, at about five o'clock, this is Safi move here. Uh, my assistant, Denise, is uh, retracting the, neo-sinotubular junction inside the graft. Uh, it's like the perfect curve with the Cooley scissors to expose the annulus. And, um, and you just all you gotta do is slide it around opposite of me and it just makes for a nice exposure without having to use some fancy retractor or something like that. Neat technique that uh, I learned by my time down at Herman down, uh, Medical Center. Do you ever drop a piece of debris down into the ventricle <laughs> yeah. so then we just suck it so, out so uh it happens <laughs> occasionally uh but you uh, if it's big enough you see it if there's any grainy stuff going in i usually stop what i'm doing and use a debridement sucker which is a little more 
focus uh, suction to, to scrape all of it off, kind of like a big Fraser, a plastic Fraser sucker. Uh, one time uh, I had an assistant, Jessica, not Jessica, Jessica, in that little corner where you clamp and the aorta bends at the bottom, mm -hmm. a chunk about the size of a fingernail had slipped down in there and I didn't oh. see it, but she saw it because she was looking up, uh -huh. uh, which would have been a stroke. Now I used to use the Embolex filter all the time on all those yep. and I didn't even really think about it. Mm -hmm. And the largest piece I ever had was about the size of a thumbnail, which is a big piece, which That's I had no, huge which That's I had no idea how I lost it in there. That's a boulder. Uh, I mean, but it caught it in the filter. But mm -hmm. every time that filter came out, there was always something in it. So I was pretty disappointed when that came off the market. So now I'm obviously much more diligent washing, flushing, suction, debris. They have a new cannula. You might want to consider it. It's called the Cardio Guard. Mm -hmm. And how this makes works, it. Medtronic. Yeah. I've, I believe it's Medtronic. No, it may not. I, I take that back. It may be a standalone company. Yeah. They may or Medtronic may be looking at them. I don't know. I think it's a standalone company. Mm -hmm. But this, what it does is the perfusion part of it is here, and further distal is a uh, is yeah. a vent, and so it's constantly taking out while you're pumping in, and it's enough to where if there's any debris. Because it too can capture uh, uh, particulate contamination as it comes out of the cannula being jetted out, it'll suck it back up. But it doesn't steal enough of your flow that it affects hmm. your perfusion. Yeah. I think we should at least look at it. Sure. Yes. So uh, one thing we missed, if we can, you guys go back to um, two minutes twelve. I'm sorry, two hours twelve minutes. Real quick there. Just for a second, That's, this is the sizing of the aortic valve. Did, you went back already? Yeah. Okay. So you stick the sizer right there. You've got the old valve out. There it is, yeah. 21, it said. 21 milliliter, mill, uh, millimeters. Yeah, so how do you decide? What, what, are, you, what are you doing? Exactly, that's my yeah. question. What are you doing with that thing? <laughs> okay, so there's two ends to the sizer. Does that really say 21 on there? I thought it did, yeah. Is that, that's a pretty big annulus. Um, so that is the, the interannular sizer. And what there's a plastic cylinder on the bottom, and on top of it is the shape of a normal annulus. So it's got those scalloped edges on it. Uh -huh. And the cylinder should go through the annulus, and those that ridge, that scalloped ridge, should sit on top of the annulus. If it goes all the way through, then you go with that part of it, the whole thing, because that's mm -hmm. a little bit bigger than the cylinder, then you need to go the next size up. Because the cylinder should fit inside into the ventricle, but the scalloped ridge should fit just on top of the annulus. And it has some stretchability to it, especially in this person, um, because she was not a stenotic. And so you definitely don't want to undersize in this case. Now. The old mantra about do not oversize, if you're in doubt, always undersize one. Um, you, that's the way I was taught at THI, mm -hmm. um, but I really try to fit it as perfectly as possible because you don't want to undersize these people because you've then you basically have mild stenosis to begin with. And you want a gradient of less than 10, but less than five ideally. Um, and the best way to do that is to size it as perfectly as you can. So when you take the aortic valve out, you're really only taking the 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 leaflets out. You're not you're not digging into the the annular structure at all. Uh, no, but you can get into it if there's big chunks of calcium that come out with it. Mm -hmm. um, the coolie scissors, I mean, they're multifunctional but uh, that's why they're they don't curved even, like that right but they don't really cut i mean you basically they it's hard to explain unless you've seen it used if you get it in the right plane it will literally peel the valve out in the correct plane without having to cut it out i see when you saying. snip and snip and snip is when you get a kind of a jagged edge and yep. it's not it's not the native annular size mm -hmm. When you get in the right plane and you basically use it to lift and scrape, it, it leaves the correct size annulus behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't run the risk of, or you push it away while you're pulling on the leaflet. There's two ways to do it. 
Yeah, and you don't. I'm, I've gotten in the right ventricle a couple of times because it's the thinner part, but you can easily fix that with the uh, stitches to place the valve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you get into the mitral on the other side, I understand it's thicker, but you're in trouble. Yeah, but that's pretty hard to do. Pretty hard to do? Yeah, okay. that's, that's, that's a lot harder to do. So what we have here is a bunch of sewing for a long time, and you know we could, we could probably go <laughs> Thanks, yeah, not that long. No, I can tell you exactly how long. You this actually, was a painfully 12, long 12, case. Twelve, yeah, well, twelve painfully sutures. Painfully long. Twelve sutures for size twenty-three and above. Mm -hmm. Nine sutures for twenty-one and below. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know there's guys that put twenty in, but that, that's the way I was trained, and it works great. Mm -hmm. so, Very low. Well, you probably have a non-existent. Uh, paravalvular leak rate because that is like really bad. It's, um, I, I can't tell you the last time I've had one. And that's what I find so interesting is that if you're, you know, uh, of course I've, I've been exposed more to TAVR here lately, which I'd really not spent a whole lot of time with, but you know, it's amazing to me at how when you do a TAVR, if they have a small paravalvular leak, they, they're okay. Well, but the if other that was a surgical thing, they, they would, it would, they would freak out. Well, <laughs> Because there's two reasons for that. The, the TAVR valve has uh, a mechanism for fixing that at, over time with protamine and healing and scarring. It's the way the bottom of the valve is. Mm, okay. Along with the new Intuity valve by Edwards, basically mm -hmm. a valve on a stick, same yeah. valve. Or the, it's uh, got all that PTFE, Dacron on the bottom. It's all fuzzy and everything that promotes a, a good seal over time. So okay. if you have a perivalvular leak and it's small or tiny, you leave it alone because it's not going to be there. Later. Okay, and we got to be nice to our spot. One of our sponsors, Levanova, their Percival valve. They have a similar to the uh, to the uh, just, in, in, in two just valve. waiting to hear from them. Okay, good. So you would try it. Yeah, <laughs> Levanova. I think it's sutureless, right? Su yeah, well, it's not sutureless. You it's put three, three stays three. sutures and in, I, and I found that typically though it's four, and um, at least for the Intuity, um, and two on the non. The non coronary side because mm -hmm. that's where you're going to get your leaks, where the mitral is. Okay. And if you put two, it, I, ever since I've done that, I've had zero perivalvular leak. Good. So I'll put four versus three. Yeah. Good. Patrick, I'm sorry. Uh, that's fine. Two, two hours and 27 minutes, if you can get to there. Oh, my goodness. What a case. Uh, I know. Uh, so. I mean, I don't even think I can. I don't think I can. Mike is really a trooper because I don't think I could run the pump this long. Yeah, I don't think I could make it. I, I gave him a couple breaks. <laughs> <laughs> need, need your afternoon nap, Grandpa. I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to go there, but okay. That's fine. For the, those in the audience that didn't hear what uh, what my lovely wife just said, she said depends. She doesn't have a mic on, so uh, you know. Apparently the. The, 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 my, my, my partners up here in crime thought that We're was funny. We're thinking it, she just said it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. She's one of those types that says what others are thinking, and but shouldn't say. <laughs> we there? All right, so what? yes, yes. So, so we're seating the valve. Yeah, we're seating the valve now, right? Uh, the... It's a little different here because I went through the graft. I didn't want to cut through my <laughs> repair, my, my anastomosis, uh, approximately, but the, I knew the uh. size of the. And you can really tug on this now because it's it's graft. It's not the it's not the root, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the aorta. Um, and it actually went in pretty easily. And here's the part coming up here in a minute that I wanted to see where that We're releasing the strut here for the uh, and the stick. The valve on a stick. This is a, they're all valves on a stick. Mm -hmm. It's just how do you release it from the valve? Was there a there's what? three proline sutures, okay. basic, basically proline monofilaments mm -hmm. that are attached to it with that little plastic birdcage looking thing on top with mm -hmm. the, the metal handle. Mm -hmm. The metal handle screws into that and then you just cut those and it pulls everything out. So I uh, know this is uh, this is not going to be Coronat, right? What would you yes. use? Oh, yeah. It's going to be Coronat? Okay, Coronat that's earlier. what I had seen on this earlier. So you're, yeah, we're going to see that. Yeah. That's fast. This is cool. Yes. So I was, uh, and I will There's say this, I was the first in. guy in Houston to use a cord knot. Really? I oh, yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. But I didn't use it on aortic, so I was always kind of scared because I didn't like necessarily the way the clips stood up, kind of proud. I was a little worried about that with the coronaries, uh, the ostia. Um, it took me a long time to actually, there were a lot of people doing it 
for the aortics before I was, because that took a long time. But mitrals, I mean, my back stopped hurting after I started using it with mitrals. Mm -hmm. And for us, it, for perfusion, it really posed a big problem, because we, if we waited until you told us to warm, like we're at 32 degrees right now, if you look over there on that right panel on the right side, 32.2, with that core knot and you have nine sutures there to core knot, we aren't going to get to 33 Correct. by the time you're done. But then you still have to close your aorta, so we have a little bit of time. Right. And this patient was a small female, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Smaller female, which buys us time. That's that's going to speed the process up too. If it's a, you know, a 300 pounder, um, you know, that's a real problem. Yeah, he's a large heat sink. Right. So this is our core knot, the tying device, right? Yep, mm -hmm. that's it right there. Just pop it in there. And, and I'm a little bit anal about putting these in. Um, I like to make sure I definitely see the coronary ostea. I like to see uh, make, and make sure it gets on the right edge, the correct edge of the annulus, putting it in. Because mm -hmm. you can actually Man, that's a view, misplace though. it. God, that's a pretty view. And then you get a little bit of, then it's a little loose, and then you get your paragravator leak. So there's kind of like two ridges there of the. I mean, look at, there it goes tough. down, and, and and that's it. Instead of throwing the, how many knots is it, eight? Well, you know, if you got a small annual sticking your big, I got big hands sticking your big digits down there and tearing the aorta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's eight all the time? Eight knots? No. Oh. 21 and below. No, eight knots. Oh, yeah, eight tie. knots. Oh, when you tie. Oh, yeah. At yeah, least. when you tie. Yeah. It's yeah. at least eight. It's at least. Okay. And that's to keep that's that's to lock it. If it's Tycron, you can do five. Uh, if it's Ethabon, you need to do at least eight because mm -hmm. it slips. And when you do it that way and have to cut them, that's been found in those embolex catheters too. Is yeah. suture thread, thread, you know, mm -hmm. pieces of mm -hmm. the suture. So if you look, yeah, if you look at that little spot, I was actually on top of the second row of the cuff, and then I okay. slipped it below. Go back big. That's okay. It's not what you do. But the surgeon, you can't, even though it's quick, you don't need to be sloppy with it. I have had this misfire a handful of times, and it's always on like the last or next to last suture. So you got to take everything out and start all over. And look, that, 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 now that's, that valve is made out of uh, bovine pericardium, Correct. right? Uh -huh. But isn't it funny how it looks like it's a piece of silicone? Now they do a process to it for. Right to help it uh, so it won't develop calcium. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's why it gives it that looking texture. You know, I just thought of something. You have to arrange that valve in a way so that it's fairly anatomically correct for its position on the cor oh, on absolutely. corners. Absolutely, so right? what you're, exactly. So you're trying to line up, so if you see the posts, those are your commissures. So at nine o'clock, where that suture is that I haven't coronated down, that's mm -hmm. where your left main is. So you want that? because that's the bottom part of your valve, the lowest part of the valve. So you get, when you have diastole, blood tries to go back through the valve, it goes right through the left main at the bottom of that cusp. Mm -hmm. If you have the left main where that post is at about 11 o'clock, 10, 30 o'clock, it, it can be obstructive. But I, th I honestly think the, the obstructive parts that come with valves being in the wrong place happen for two reasons. One, you've either folded the, the sinus in half and pinched it, mm -hmm. Okay, even though you have the sutures placed correctly, the valve is not seated correctly. But right. I think more commonly is that if you have a valve that may be a little too big or you don't have the sutures exactly right, it stretches usually the right coronary sinus to where it fish mouths and, and, and makes the right coronary ostea slit. Because, I mean, there's nobody, no heart surgeon, when these, they're putting these in, that puts the suture through the coronary. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta go and, around it. But they show as having ischemia or right heart failure or something like that. Oh, it's air or whatever. Throw a, right, throw a graft on it right away. I'm telling you, the times I've done it, they come right off. Yeah. It's I've, when you've struggled and you're trying not to do an extra bypass because you don't want to, you don't want to take vein, et cetera, then you have trouble recovering them. And sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. But I, I don't think it's, it's you're not sewing the coronary shut. I think you just changed the anatomy up. Mm -hmm. I and mean, the other thing is maybe the aorta is not pliable enough. And when you sew it together, you're actually shortening the aorta a little bit, right? A native aorta, I'm not talking about this case right. per se. Right. I think it brings up the right coronary to where the right coronary kinks down because you're stretching it 
when it sits like this, and then when you put the aorta together, it pulls the osteo up, and it, it's tinted down now. And so it's kinked. I don't think it's a uh, – they always talk about a technical error. I think it's more of changing the anatomy of the coronaries. And, you know, and, and, and it's so intuitive that you just said that, but I never thought of that before. I mean, it's not guys putting the suture through the wrong place. Right. Well, I but mean – I, I honestly no, think it's you changing yeah, the, dyna you the dynamic and the anatomy of the heart. You say that, but remember when you well, put that cross so. clamp on? Yeah. I have seen somebody – put an aortic cross clamp on the holding <laughs> no holding the, no, holding the clamp in their right hand and they were standing on the normal surgeon's side of the table and then couldn't quite figure out what, why what they you? putting the aortic cross clamp on holding it in their right hand mm -hmm. standing on the normal surgeon's side of the table and applying it and then not being able to figure out. <laughs> so they're giving pleads to the brain? So they so couldn't figure the brain, out. Right? They couldn't figure out, oh no, they couldn't goodness, figure out okay, why they couldn't pick the heart. That up. happened to you? You saw that? Yes, that's happened to me. Wow. Yes. Okay. I've it? seen a lot of stuff. Don't ask wasn't me who it was. It made... wasn't here in Houston, just for the record. <laughs> Somebody had a story, it was one of you two had a story about the cross clamp being backwards so that it was in the way of the heart. That's what I was saying. That's what I was talking about. Oh, my goodness. That's what I was talking about. They put it on. So the clamp was oh, over the top. Yeah, of the for him, when he puts yeah. the cross clamp on, he has it in his left hand yeah, yeah. towards the head. If you're standing on the surgeon's side of the table, it's the right side of the patient, right? Mm -hmm. So if he's standing here like this and the head's there and the, heart, the aorta's here and the heart's here, then he's got it in his left hand and he does like that and puts it on. He can't put it in his right hand or he'd have to turn it around like this. So if he has it in his right hand and he does it, the handle of it is right over the heart. Yeah. All right, here I'm putting, blowing some CO2 in here um, for obvious reasons. And then, um, should be getting ready to close the uh, aortotomy, uh, the yeah. uh, graftotomy here. We, uh, let me see. Yep, here we go. So we have uh, the final conduit sutures are at two hours and 41 minutes. We have five minutes left on the show, so we've got to get through this. Okay. We're close. Okay. <laughs> we have to have a little bit of discussion, so yeah. go so ahead. Could, I'm not going to say to, anything uh, else. Can you go to two hours and 41 minutes? Okay. So these are the final sutures. Looks like it's sped up. It's pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. That's just me, Patrick. <laughs> <He's fat>. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's cool. The coolie speed, did you say? No. That's cool. Let me tell you, Cooley speed does not look like that. Cooley speed is just not stopping. That's that's how he did it. He was so incredible. Man, look at that blood pressure, Patrick. What are you doing? That's not me. The pressure's on it's Mike. Mike. I, I don't yeah. Over seventy one, something there's no that's not right. It's not pulsing. What's wrong? They were drawing a blood gas or something. No, they weren't drawing a blood Dude, gas. Dude, it was the, you had a you had a pulse pressure of like fifty. Didn't you see it? It was like one ten over Okay. That looks like a lot of Neo. That looks like Neo to me. Okay. So the clamp comes off at two hours and 44 minutes. And then uh, we'll, we'll watch that because we're going to have the deering process again, and then we come off bypass. Okay, well, okay. the clamp is off. He's starting to, he's starting to, to there's movement here, unless that's the same. Deering. deering right there. There's oh, okay, a deering, you're deering the ventricle. That's what it is. That's just an artifact of you moving the heart around. So you just stab a needle right into the left ventricle. Yeah. And nice. I noticed you don't have to suture that. Okay, so another technical thing, go in, angle it, go another direction, change your angle again, go in. So the hole you create is a zigzag path through the heart, even though it's straight needling. When you pull it out, all those layers fold over each oh, other. Oh, really? If you That's stick it cool. straight in the heart, yeah. Yeah, it's gotta... more likely to bleed. Huh, okay. That's it. That's cool. a good idea. All right, so we come off pump uh, at uh, two hours and 57 minutes, and idea. then we'll be. I listened to heart surgery class. That's you did. You did good. <laughs> heart surgery class. Maybe that was some medicines to keep it from licking back Exactly. Mm -hmm. Same thing yeah, like when you put a spinal right. in, mm -hmm. you go in, you know, like in the pregnant lady epidural, so you don't get those uh, leaks. Okay, the heart's beating. We're going to, we and Mike's now going to take them off pump. Heart's ejecting. Filling up. And so you can see your pulse pressure here is much more. And look, look at the level in the oxygenator. It's almost gone. Mike runs them pretty low. I got, I turn the low. level sensor off and then I go down to the bottom. Look, he's getting ready to clamp yep. it. He's going to clamp it right here. There he goes. We go Boom. off. We go off he's fast. Off. We go off fast. He is off. 
Well, especially after a three hour. Yeah, watch <laughs> it, Patrick. <laughs> I did two heart, two surges on the same patient in mm -hmm. three hours. Not bad. That was outstanding. That was good. That was good stuff. All right, so we're off pump. Good. We're off pump. Uh huh. It gets better. Don't worry about those numbers right now for anybody out there that knows what they're looking at. They I, get I, better over I, time. You know, I don't panic about those. If you're looking at the heart, and your TE shows and good it's function, moving good. That doesn't. Uh, That's it all. It used to bother me. It used to scare me to death. But mm -hmm. I mean. I, you know mm -hmm. me on aortics, I usually keep them mm -hmm. 50, 60, 70 mm -hmm. to make sure the suture line's not bleeding. Mm -hmm. But this, this is, yeah, and if you blow it up to 300, you might really uh, do I've some trouble, that. have some trouble. You um, hear it popping and there it goes. Yep. So, so three hour pump run, this patient did great, right? Yeah. Once again, another example of not only excellent perfusion, but the value of the cardiopulmonary bypass circuit and oh yeah well <laughs> good ultra filtration i mean getting all those nasty cytokines and evil humors yeah out of there I, we I'm didn't a big even believer show that we used I mean, look at that it. look at that ekg super sharp mm -hmm. you know yeah so. and that's two cross clamps mm -hmm. two cardioplegias three hours on pump i mean you can't beat that yeah old lady old lady who went home and do just fine mm -hmm. and had she a good did. time so shelly since this is your first time with us, um, what do you think? Oh, that's great. What do you think of the show? <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing it on the other side and look at some of the ones you've done previously. Yeah, we got a uh, bunch. 18. We have a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> we have a bunch. It's a big resource. Yeah, it, it is. is. But it's been a, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Now, phone lines are open, right? Yep. So if anybody wants to call, we do have a question. Why did they stop distributing the Embolex cannula was one question. And I have another question, which I answered from somebody in Puerto Rico that said, uh, I think it's in Puerto Rico. Yeah, 787 area code. He asked, what time, what, what was your temperature the first time he came off? I said 35. He said it looked like it was 31. So why don't you address that? And then Dr. Montoya could address the Embolex. Uh, that's pretty cold to try to well, yeah. well, the we first, can go back to it on the film. I, I didn't know what it was. It was the I think the nasal was 35, but the bladder was 31. So we typically go by the nasopharyngeal, and if you shake up the bladder a little bit, so you just basically didn't believe it, correct? And then he asked what the venous temp is, etc. Right, and, and, and if we're cold, I know some surgeons are impatient, but I we start allowing the patient uh, to eject more, and we may stay that way, mm -hmm. low flow, but allow the patient to eject to warm the body up mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and maybe adjust the nasopharyngeal temperature probe. And usually it's, if, if you've been warming for a while on a relatively normal sized patient, especially a small typically one. don't believe it. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we come completely off, we'll make sure they're warm because I keep my room super cold, which is true. It's like probably 54 mm -hmm. in there. It's maybe. sometimes it's 55, 54. It's, like, it's like, yeah. you know, almost like a children's. But mm -hmm. we, we have an underwater, uh, under body. the patient, underbody. Uh, blank control. Whatever it's called. Yeah. That's what it's called. Okay. Yeah. So, Embolex. Oh, my gosh. You would. Um, one, I don't think. I think the, one of the reasons was they pulled it off the market was it didn't really show a decrease in stroke rate, which I don't degree, agree with. Um, so that was done by Dr. Mack, that study. I thought it had something to do with the coating. The, the heparin yeah, coating? So that's, mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically it was heparin coated uh, or heparin bonded and when they released it, it got approved by the FDA, but then it got, had to be re-examined because of the heparin and so they, they had, had to, to resubmit it, they had to resubmit it and it just, it became, and then the Mac paper came out that showed a trend toward reduced stroke, but it wasn't statistically significant. And the company, I honestly believe that uh, Edwards was, the margin for profit was pretty low. Mm -hmm. And they had some opposing forces. Um, and they just said, okay, we're gonna throw all, we're gonna, we're gonna go where the money is, which mm -hmm. is Taver uh, in, in Tuity. I get it confused with Invuity the light, but Intuity uh, and their newest valve, uh, the Inspiris, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Those are the high market, uh, high profit margin things. Mm -hmm. But it was, I, it was the heparin concept, which uh, which was silly. I mean, how long has heparin been around? 
encoded to things. Well, I've never seen that confirmed. That's the story that I've heard. No, I, it's, it was I mean, on, I on a release. It was on a press mm-hmm. release. It I, mean, I remember I did, a, I did a, um, a talk in Yeah, you did in New Orleans. It. That's right. Or in Las Vegas, when we were in Vegas. But, you know, I think I think I disagree with, you know, I mean, Dr. Mack's a great guy. He was one of our award recipients. I, if you do enough of them, I'm convinced it'll mm-hmm. be statistically significant. Well, I think the reason it came out was because, of course, you know, he's a very big Taver proponent. Correct. And I think that, you know, the there was a push with the new classification for stroke, class one and class two, and that if you look at Taver patients, uh, nine, 90 plus percent, up to 100 percent, oh, really, have an, a new D, uh, uh, lesion by diffusion weighted MRI. So in, this, in essence, they now have to consult patients and tell them that your stroke rate is for class one X percent, but for class two, and what a class two stroke is, it's nearing 100 percent. Right. And the argument and, and was... And we don't know what that means long right, term. But we don't check that with heart surgery. So the whole argument here was, are, does the, the embolex, interestingly enough, almost all of them had some debris, the, but that, yet it didn't I sent every stroke. one of mine, had probably something. 300 for a couple of years. Had something. And they all had something. Yeah, and I find that, I just find that amazing. I mean, certainly whatever was captured, that, that didn't cause a stroke. <laughs> and that you don't know which one is going to be the clinical stroke. And there might have been some from putting the filter in. I don't. You don't know. I mean, I didn't do mm-hmm. transcranial Doppler on those either. But right. I was putting what do, that, what that do you in. think of that? You think we should be doing that on every heart case, every pump case? I think so. I think so too. I mean, what do you think, Patrick? What using the TCD? Oh, yes. Versus, I, I do. Versus I do because it's an indicator cerebral of cerebral oximetry. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We we should definitely. Shelley, your I mean, thoughts. We do it. I mean, we do it on a lot of our patients. So TCD? No, uh, there's a difference. We use TCD it. is is transcranial is, Doppler. It's okay. not the uh, cerebral okay. oximetry. Right. We do cerebral about. oximetry. Oh, right. You do that. Right. right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, do you see this? Like, where do you see this this technique coming into play in your world? Do you have any thoughts in your mind about what? next project you and Patrick can maybe collaborate on to develop <laughs> even more of this so we're information. Yeah, we were talking about it at the break. Um, you know, being able to put all this up and actually let your scrub nurse, your circulating nurse see all this, have the conversations with perfusion to support that. Um, I've been doing hearts for about 25 years and you know so much of it's you go up there and you learn a routine mm. and once you've learned the routine then really is when it. that's exactly right <laughs> you don't necessarily know the why mm-hmm. you learn the routine and then you start learning the why mm-hmm. and then you once you've got that down then you can um, actually you know focus on and learn why you're doing what you're doing mm-hmm. this allows you to learn why you're doing what you're doing yes. before and yes. it would just I, I just think it just makes you know just make it so much well and you guys have a, a pretty nice setup there where there's that little table where you get your most of it's kind of hokey to be honest with you the little poster board things where you oh look at this and mm-hmm. sign this and got checked off on it like how to wash your hands and stuff mm-hmm. I mean, you can have a monitor up there Yes. Like a 10-minute mm-hmm. thing on. And you guys are sitting out there between cases sometimes or before we, cases, the perfusionists. Where we're at, we actually have a little uh, monitor board up there that we can play films on. Right. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. that would be kind of That would be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. So, you, so you said you've been doing hearts for 20, 25 mm-hmm. years. So mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. started doing hearts when you were a candy striper, I'm assuming. Mm, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> That's what but I thank think. thank you. That's what I think. And, and uh, anyway... If there's, if anybody wants to call in, now's your opportunity because I think we're getting ready to, to call it a night. If so, if you want to call in, do it now. But, uh, but anyway, I hope everyone has enjoyed the show. I have. I, I feel like I've always like doing them. Yes, and you do a, uh, you do an exquisite job as well. <laughs> I want to also I want to thank you, Shelly, so much for Thanks coming for here. Mm-hmm. We we really want to do more and open this up. I don't know who's out there in the audience just yet. We won't get that until we do the analytics as to how many were perfusionists, how many were nurses, how many were other things. We just don't know yet, but we'll figure that out. Um, but we would uh, really like to do some stuff and start becoming more and more inclusive. Because I'm, I'm a firm believer that although you are the captain of the ship, um, you can't 
I don't want to be rowing though. You can't sail. So you can do the rowing. You can't sail without a rudder, right? You got to have a rudder, right. and uh, and you got to have folks that you know are going to be the uh, the supporting cast. You can be the uh -huh. conductor of the symphony, but you got to have the instruments and the musicians that know how to play them. Uh, and it. that's what this, this will allow me to do my job easier and make my job more um, perfect, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And every move I make makes his job easier. Yes. All of that results back to that yep. patient. That's right. My job is to make him, his job seem seamless. He should not have to ask me for anything. I should be behind the scenes. He doesn't even have to I'm know I'm there. I'm starting to lose my verbal skills. It's <laughs> more about signals and right. this and cautery and scissors. And, yep. Yep. Right, exactly. That's a very, very good point. But how much of this too do you think would be a benefit to both younger and older nurses who, you know, the younger ones to help stimulate their, keep their enthusiasm going because you get a younger nurse and they have that youthful exuberance and they want to learn everything. And this can help perpetuate that, but also in the more experienced nurses who, you know, I mean, we're the same way. We become somewhat, you know, eh, it's a job. Oh, I gotta go do another case. And, well, and this gives you that renewed sense of enthusiasm, you know, and gets you excited you, about what it is we do. Well, you know what it is for me? I, I, because I really don't have an assistant, mm -hmm. I engage them. Mm -hmm. Yes, right? and that's what this is intended to I mean, do. No, I'm, I mean, I'm literally like, here, you're yes. doing this part of it, you're doing that part. You know. Yes, and that's right. You do that very well, actually, in the OR. Is you do that, you include people, and you and they're they're learning. not an instrument passer. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. They're too cheap to hire a PA. So correct. <laughs> I don't need one. These guys are great. No, they are actually. Yeah. I think they are, and I think that they truly enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that learning is such. When you're learning new things, it makes going to work so much more enjoyable when you're stimulated by your job. Right. And that really does play a role in having, you know, a good surgeon, a good leader in the room, somebody who's, you know, cause somebody has to be in charge, otherwise the ship's just gonna be lost at sea. So there has to be somebody that's captain of the ship. And, uh, and, and the things that we learn from you really help us to be able to do our job better, but it also makes us feel a part of the process. And that is critical, in my view, critically important to having into building a team that is cohesive and is happy and is wanting to be there. Right. Well, the surgeon also has to listen to his people too. You know, um, if, if the engine room's on fire, mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to listen to that and pay attention to that, right? Sometimes, yes, sometimes. Uh, a lot now, of I surgeons know you, have that problem. I know you think that I'm just talking back there to hear myself talk, <laughs> but I'm not. Okay. I'm really trying to tell you something. <laughs> Shelly, you were trying to say something. Would keep... I, would, I would agree if that was coming from Patrick. Uh -huh. yeah. um. So let me ask you this real quick, just off subject, since we're winding up. Yes. Um, how do you come up with all these topics? Do you get them suggestions from the Facebook people? We, we do. We, well, you this, do, a, this, do you love, give a list, like, a, and what do they want to hear next? How do, we, how do you move on to the next topic? Very good point. Uh, good question. So this particular project is Patrick's brainchild. Mm -hmm. So all of the credit, and let's show Patrick on the screen right now. Put it right on him. Right, I want to. I want a close up of him. Tighten it up. <laughs> Look at that. Close. This he was the brainchild of this project. Mm -hmm. Now, what we'll do tomorrow is send out evaluations for the program that we did on Tuesday and the one that we did tonight, and they'll evaluate this program. And one of the questions is please let us know what you would like to hear about in future programs. Like one of the, one is, would you like to hear more about this? Would you like to see more of this? And then what other subjects? And so we take those and we also get them from the New Orleans conference and we select things out of there that seem more common. So if we get somebody that asks for something and it's only one person out of 300 mm -hmm. and you ask, and but there's, there's 50 people that ask for something else, we're probably going to go towards that something else. But we consider all of them. Yeah. Okay. So that's how we do it. And sometimes we just, you know, I just think of something or Patrick or somebody has an idea and yeah. they'll present it and I'll go, man, that's a really good idea. Yeah. 
This was this was a great idea. I think this has been for me. This has been the has best been program we've ever done. Mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. this started six months ago. It's been a half yeah. a year, half a year <laughs> putting this together. And it's again, I don't believe months. anybody has ever done this before. I do not believe this, as you see it up there, exists anywhere else. So, I'll, I'll trust you, man. We're paving a path. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Any final comments, Patrick? Uh, we're out of time, but I, I was going to ask, is there anything that the perfusionist could do to make your job easier, or is there not? To make my job mm -hmm. easier? Think um, about like when you're handing lines up or whatever. You know. No, I think, um, I mean, the group that we work with, again, we all work together enough that we kind of just read each other very mm -hmm. well. So um, we've had a case where, you know, wasn't going too well. It's, you know, I need the lines up. Somebody's going to get them to you. We're going to have them prepared. Sometimes we prepare them. Sometimes our surgeon and us do it. So um, I don't think so. I think, I mean, it seems to work really well what we've got. Okay. Not for me. That's your job. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Well, um, our next program, uh, does anybody remember what our next program is? Our next program, let's see, I have to look it up. You guys talk for a second, because I, I gotta look this up. <laughs> I forgot to do it. You do any cases tomorrow? Um, down in Northwest. Oh, uh, that's Cell you? Cell Saver. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna tell you while, while they're saying, we wanna thank both of you, you and Sheldon, because you know, this is your personal time to be here. And, uh, and, and listen, you know, that's, uh, that's a, it's a commitment. Um, it's taking away time from your family, relaxing, doing whatever else you want to do. You seeing your family, if you remember where they are, we'll get you on Google Maps so you can get home because you probably haven't been there for a while. Um, <laughs> Shelly happens to live close to the studio, which we just mm -hmm. found out, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So it won't be so hard for you nope. to get here. And, uh, and all, but we do appreciate you and Patrick, you too, uh, Magic, David, taking your time to do this in the evening. It's tough for everybody and, but, but, but. It's, 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 it shows your commitment in that you can't, you, the best way to show your commitment to your profession is by giving back. And it's really meaningful. And I, I personally appreciate all of you very, very much. Um, November 13th, it's you. Novel anticoagulants and management of anticoagulation. That's me? That's going to be you, yes. <laughs> and then, I didn't know what all you signed up for. I'm going to hear right by then. <laughs> and, then, and, then yeah, good. and then priming solutions and volume management is on November 15th. So November 13th, the novel anticoagulants, how are we going to manage? Thursday? It's a Tuesday. OK, good. How are we going to manage patients yeah. moving forward that are on these, so these fancy easy. anticoagulants? Yeah, so they're so easy. It's mm -hmm. easy. Because there's no antidote. No. Plyvex, you can get platelets. That's all you can do. Or time. What do you do? Or time. Bleeding time. But what do you do with somebody that's on Xarelto? We'll talk about it. Okay, November 13th. <laughs> we'll talk about it. That was good. No spoilers. No spoilers. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. You got this urgent letter from the ABCP. Oh, wow. I wonder what this could be.
Jujo Basha from the ABCP. Wow, this looks official. Dear Certified Clinical Perfusionist, the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion is advising you that you must submit 10 Category 1 CEU by next week or you will lose your certification. Sincerely, Dave Matthews, PhD, Roger Ramirez, PhD, and the executive co-directors. Let me call my immediate supervisor, Stephanie, and ask her if I can go. This is perfect. Hello? Yes, Stephanie, hi, this is Joe. Hi, Joe. Stephanie, I just got an urgent letter from the ABCP stating that I am 10 CEU short and I've been looking at this New Orleans conference and I'd like to submit my request to go to that because I really need the credits. Uh, geez, Joe, uh, I'm sorry I'm not gonna be able to help you. Administration informed me they're denying all meeting requests. I guess you're gonna have to find another way to get your seizures. Oh my God. Uh, there's nothing I can do. You're on your own, Joe, sorry. I'm taking this up the chain of command. Come in. Dr. McGilvery. Hey, Joe. I don't, thank you for seeing me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I do not have enough CEUs to maintain my certification. Joe, how is that my problem? Our role is to pay you to do perfusion, not to pay you to go take courses. And it was that way in the past, but we just don't have the money to do it anymore. So you're going to have to figure it out on your own. Joe, what's up? Dr. Lumsden, I do not have enough CEUs to maintain my certification and I'm going to lose my certification. If you can take all the perfusionists away, we can't do any cases. We don't have enough perfusionists. I don't care about these CEUs. It costs too much money. you got to stay here and do these cases. Figure it out some other way you're going to get education. Hey Joe, you received another uh, urgent letter from the ABC. Oh, thank you. Dear Certified Clinical Perfusionist, the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion regrets to inform you that because you lack enough Category 1 CEU, your certification is suspended. You are no longer a Certified Clinical Perfusionist. Oh, no. Hmm, I really want to go to this meeting. Hey, Joe. You received a letter from your job, man. Hey, dude. Thank you so much. Dear Joe Basha, the Health and Happiness Hospital regrets to inform you that because you lost your ABCP certification to a, due to a lack of Category 1 CEUs, you are fired. You must report immediately to the operating room and clean out your locker to make room for your replacement who clearly knew more than you about getting CEUs and maintaining their certification.